Yep. Been alive. Oh, we are live. Cool. Excellent. We're actually live, as in on the stream live, as in like, are you alive? I thought you said. As in, are we alive? But now we are here. Hello! Welcome back to ESA Legends 2023. I'm Bowie the Hero. Are we running Golden Sun? Uh, I am not at all biased. I am very moderate when it comes to opinions on this game. It's the best handheld RPG ever made, bar none. Um, that's objective fact. It's the best handheld at this event, surely. Yeah. 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 I mean, you say that as if there aren't any, but there's FF Legends too. Yeah, I mean... Sorry, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> um, the competition is fierce. All right, okay, well, um, I... We're... Yeah, cool. I don't think they have any donations come through, or can we just crack on? I mean, we can, we can, we can crack on. I haven't... I mean, I've got refresh on. If something pops in immediately, I will get straight on to you. Well, I mean, I'm doing it right now, so... Oh, yeah, no, no, I mean, like... Okay. Start. Okay, well, Before you start, I have a question. Are you alive? Yes. Good. Um, Thank you. So um, I'm going to rename Isaac into I, Garrett into G, Ivan into V, Mia into M. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, right, I'm just going to crack on. So uh, let's uh, let's do this in three, two, one. Let's go. Clapper. Okay, so uh, this is a roughly, let's say, four-hour hour run if everything goes poorly. Um, as, as I said, this is just an, an incredible handheld RPG that I just think stands head and shoulders above any of, any of its contemporaries, both technically and, and, and mechanically. Um, both Golden Sun 1 and Golden Sun 2, technically not 1 and 2 because they're two halves of the same story. Um, this game does actually have a subtitle in the Japanese version, which is uh, roughly translated as The Broken Seal. So Golden Sun The Broken Seal, which is this one, and then Golden Sun The Lost Age, two halves of one fantastic whole. Um, uh, yeah, incredible um, technical um, like showcases on the GBA, which is uh, quite fascinating, as you'll see. Um, it was made by Camelot Software Planning, who um, were, went via many names over the course of their years. They currently are known to make the Mario sports games right now, so Mario Tennis Aces, Mario Golf, Super Rush, whatever it's called. Um, and they also made a bunch of other games, like the Shining Force series for Sega, um, and also made Beyond the Beyond on, on the PS1. Um, they are my favorite development team of all time. They are fantastic. I love everything about them. And that's why I have a month dedicated to celebrating all of those games every year, or as close to every year as I can. So welcome to the world of Wayard, which is a disc-like planet um, where people live, um, creatures, monsters, all kinds of things. Um, and it, uh, many, 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 many moons ago, um, the powers of the elements, fire, water, earth, and wind, um, they essentially ruled the world. You know, the, 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 the seas raged, fires, um, you know, erupted and the the the, uh, the ground was split and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the people and the, and the residents of Wayard basically couldn't really survive in that, so they had to find a way to temper the elements. Um, and through the powers and the magics of, of alchemy, they constructed four elemental towers and sealed the powers of the four elements into those four elemental lighthouses. Um, and uh, threw away the key, or protected the key, or kind of hid hid the keys to those many, many moons ago. And the elements decided to calm down, and people could flourish. Um, let's jump a million years into, into the future or so. Not a million, but a fair few. Um, and we join the two uh, young characters here, Isaac and Garrett, um, on... Well, they were woken up by a storm as um, the Mount Aleph boulder, which is a boulder at the top of Mount Aleph, which is where this, uh, this village is, lo is located, um, is falling. This village of Vale um, is sort of a, um, a a kind of a hidden village of sorts. Within this world are special kinds of people called ad called adepts. These are the descendants of those people from many many moons ago who had the, who wielded the powers of alchemy, and they still have control over those elements. Different characters will have, or different tribes will have different um, control. Uh, vale is generally a, a group of um, of earth and some fire adepts. Um, so Isaac is an earth adept. Uh, and Garrett is a Mars adept, or fire, Mars. Uh, so Venus, Earth, Mars, fire, Jupiter, wind, Mercury, water. Um, and uh, yeah, so these, these people here, uh, the people of Vale, generally at the top of uh, Mount uh, um, Aleph is a sanctum called Soul Sanctum, which is a, a shrine for the sun. And these people basically protect the powers of alchemy, because at the top of Soul Sanctum, is a hidden sanctum where the keys to unlocking the power of alchemy lie dormant. Um, but uh, yeah. 
because because it's such a strong power, um, it is a little bit uh, tricky living here. As you can see, we have storms uh, because of the. Uh, we're not running though, because of the um, the Mount Elf Boulder falling. We'll 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 get into exactly why that's happening uh, a little bit later. Um, but so far, as you can see, it's a lot of um, a lot of storminess, and. Uh, a bit of scariness to it as well. But um, yeah, right now we're just going to go and do some basic things. R run around the village, try and get to a safe haven. Um, but uh, as you saw, when we were running down to this plaza here, which is where we were asked to go by our parents, um, we did see along the way that uh, a friend of Isaac and Garrett's, that young lady with the pink hair on the right, or purple hair, her name's Jenna. Um, her brother, Felix, is currently stuck in the lake and is drowning, and we need to go and save him. So. Um, this big statue or this kind of like weird rock in the middle of this pool here uh, is a synergy stone which allows adepts to recharge their 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 powers if ever they run out. So MP in this game, um, or generally what is MP, is called PP, synergy points. And yes, get the jokes out now. Um, but the synergy stones allow adepts to regain their PP. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, this uh, this chap here with the black hair has been re re recharging, and he's going to help uh, Felix escape from the a, a potential watery grave. I managed to just uh, scare many the Lost Stage runners by saying watery grave. Okay, so um, what I should mention and get into is that this category is any percent no save and quit, which essentially is a no RNG manipulation run. Um, this game has two types of RNG. Oh, by the way, the Mount uh, uh, Aleph Boulder was freed and has fallen, and it's not so good. Oh dear. Oh dear. Not great. Not a great ending. Um, but yeah, so uh, no save and quit. Sorry, I'll just quickly run through the RNG thing. Uh, this game has two types of RNG. General RNG, or the GRN, and then battle RNG, which is the BRN. Now, these are two separate RNG values that um, advance at different rates. The battle RNG it advances every single time an action in battle is taken. General RNG advances when anything is moving on screen, like the rain. So any percent of this game is completely scripted. You can basically manipulate everything in the game to your whim by knowing how to control the game and control the RNG. But no SNQ will not do that. Now, this is a marathon setting, so I might do some safety saves and I will do soft resets um, if I need to. Because if you soft reset the game, so A, B, start, select, we'll just re-reset to the, to the title. This clears the general RNG. And general RNG generally affects things like how effects go. So like death size has an instant death effect. It'll either proc that instant death or won't based on the, on the, the GRN. Um, and, that, and that is reset by soft resetting. But if you hard reset, so console off and on, you reset both kinds of RNG. Um, so that allows us to then do very specific actions to get very specific outcomes from the opponent. So um, we're, stop we're, we're, we're basically preventing that. And it makes for a much more dynamic run, I think, in terms of like viewership. Like you just kind of, as a runner, I don't know what's going to happen, so I have to kind of adapt to what happens. Um, and as a viewer, it's always like, oh, they just got bodied, and that's fun. And we like getting bodied every now and then. That's true. I'm I'm really like a, a big fan of runs that have RNG in them, where you have to like figure things out or adapt or dynamically adjust the things on the fly as they are. Mm. But we do, we, do have, we have $5 from our very good friend Popiter. And speaking of watery grave and things that aren't great, it says Bovril. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I believe that would have been for one of one of the character names. So we do have Nier coming up next, and that does have a character naming incentive. So we could potentially name our character Bovril. Yeah, sorry, uh, I, sorry, I did like crack on quite quickly, but I wanted to get. We've got we've got serious things to do. We also have twenty five dollars from John Shepard, who says upside down five minutes starting at entering Mercury Lighthouse for charity, please. Good luck and have fun. Ah. <sighs> Okay. So you see, you say, uh, but all I'm hearing is, yay. Yay. Uh, five minutes. $25, boy. Just wondering when that ends. Okay. I can time it. Well, no, 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 no. I'm wondering when that ends, but when I enter, like, how long that is. Because if... Oh, how far you would get in. I should be fine, yeah. We can, we can segment your five minutes, if you wish. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. 
Jolly good. That should be fine. Should be fine. Well, we did, I'm just mashing text right now, so... Is that it? No, we good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you so much indeed. For the lovely donations! Um, yeah, so this is um, a game that's gone, over, gone through some real changes and some real um, advancements over the last few years. Um, the category was really put into effect around like late 2019, 2020 kind of time. Um, and since then, it's come on leaps and bounds. And uh, getting sub-4 was the first goal, and you know, getting sub-350, sub-340. Um, my PB is 338, which seems t quite close to the um, to the incentive. However, there is a new route that came about after I kind of finished grinding my runs, um, and it, it skips a boss fight in this game and saves about 17 minutes um, of gameplay. Uh, however, in order to do it, we do need to go out of our way to get an extra item, which adds about five, six minutes to the run. So we're looking at like a, an 11 minute time save in total. Um, which is pretty cool. It, it does. It did change like like the mid game quite heavily, um, and there has been a bunch of of, of, of optimizations and general um, build differences that have happened that make uh, I've had to try and learn and and adapt to over the course of this um, of like learning or relearn le le learning the game I should say. Excuse me. Um, but uh, if you haven't seen Golden Sun before, it is an RPG. It is a turn-based RPG, and I mean like old-school turn-based. There's no ATB. There's no kind of like uh, like dynamic menuing in uh, in like like um, uh, like turn order. It's more a case of it's like old-school Final Fantasy one to three, where it's like you get all four characters, you input all four commands, and then the turn order plays out after you've decided everything. Um, so, but it does have some caveats to that, and that is um, I'll get to it when it's when it's relevant, but. The Jin system in this game is, uh, and just generally, an incredible um, system, which is very, very flexible. And as far as like a strategizing concept goes, probably one of one of the, one of the best I've ever seen or experienced in in, in an RPG. So, yeah, um, I'll, I'll, you'll see it a lot later on, and you'll, you'll see it throughout out the game and how flexible it can be. Um, now, because it's no SNQ and we have to not manipulate RNG, there's one thing I have to do, and that is see out the beginning of this game. So the intro of this game is from starting a new game until you leave Vale. Um, before that, there's a lot of lore dumping and a lot of overall concepts to understand about the world of Wayard, which all happens here, which I'll, I'll give you the footnotes for, but this intro is 42 minutes long. I will not leave Vale until about 42 minutes on, on the clock, which is, it sounds bad, um, but for some reason I don't mind it. Um, but there are battles that I will flee from, um, and there is great music to listen to, uh, and puzzles to solve. So it's not completely um, for nothing. But if you're doing an, an, like an, an any percent run, you can just like start from outside the intro and go from leaving Vale from then on. But because it's the game is so manipulatable, in order to fulfill the requirements of no S and Q, we have to see the intro because this is an RNG mess, and we just can't control it. And so there's nothing we can do to manipulate from this point. And so it's the safest way to allow a no manip category to operate. But yeah, it's uh, it is a very strong opening and a very well written opening, I think, for what it is. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go make it. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to the west to meet our good friend Craden. Now, as a rule of thumb in Golden Sun, um, as the years or the age of a character increases the lines of dialogue they have also increases. Um, Craden is a really old man, so he talks a hell of a lot. Um, now, let's get back to lore for a little bit. These two characters, we've got Minardi on the left and Saturos on the right. Uh, these two showed up f uh, a few years ago. Five years ago? Three years ago? Two years ago? I think it was three and a half. Three and a half. How however many years ago it was that, that, that the storm raged in Vale, uh, Saturos and Minardi were there, and they came from the north as on the north side of the screen and came down, um, uh, scoffing about what about them having uh, like some confusion or, or a difficult time um, looking at something, which kind of is like, well, well, what were they doing though those years ago? And they're still here hanging around Vale. Uh, you know, it's like, what what's going on there? Um, so it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll leave them to it. We're going to go hang out with Craden. So rule of thumb, old man talks a lot. Let's go. You can tell he's old because of his hair. Does that mean I'll never get old? You still have hair. It's just in like another place. It means you're, you're, so, you're so sweet, you. <laughs> he knows. He knows just what to say. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, here we go. Um, right, so this is uh, Craden, as I said. He's, uh, a, he's a visiting scholar, and he's basically, whilst he's here in Vale, he is kind of teaching the kids of Vale about history and about, about, about the world. Um, and what he wants to do, really, as a scholar, is he wants to get into Soul Sanctum, a, again, a sacred place to, to the people of Vale, um, a shrine to the sun. Soul Sanctum. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go up there and have a little search because he has a very unique item called Mithril Bags. Um, these are powerful bags um, that have some kind of like, I guess, kind of some excellent properties that allow it, it to hold powerful items. Um, we'll get into that again when it becomes relevant once more, but he does have these items and he's going to, essentially he wants to explore the ruins of Soul Sanctum and find out what really is happening in Mount, Mount LF and what happened two or three years ago, however many years it is. I'm going to get a, dir a dir dirty message from Plexa being like, it's two years ago, you loser! I don't know, maybe. Because I always forget. Because I'm so used to saying seven years, because every game is like seven. Seven, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Ocarina of Time and it's seven years. Final Fantasy seven and it's seven decades of never not being relevant apparently somehow. Okay, now we're off. Also, you can tell that, that, that the music is absolutely wonderful. Uh, composed by Motoi Sakuraba, uh, obviously a fantastic composer, um, known for driving um, like b driving battle themes, guitars, and all that kind of good stuff. A bit of a different take here with this music here, um, but specifically it's the utilization of the GBA sound font that really makes this soundtrack work. A lot of people like, like to criticize the GBA sound font, saying it's like, oh, it's not as good as SNES, and, and, and other such silly uh, complaints. Um, but the, the, the composition and the sound font is used incredibly to make very atmospheric and uh, uh, strong themes throughout the game. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so we can jump. So there, is ju there, are, there are jumping puzzles in the game. And there is combat that we are going to run from. Now, technically, it's if I do fail to flee twice, I should just use, like, one spell to kill enemies, but um, it's technically faster, but in, on the whole, running is what is considered the fastest option. But uh, that might change, you might see. Attacks first, lovely. Now, if I see attacks first, I have to, f I just should flee. There's no reason to not flee, you know? Um, unless there's an enemy that I need to kill, and those those like variations will be explained when, when, they, when, when they show up, but uh, here we go. Bloody Nora, what is this encounter rate? One thing I should mention is that the menu in Golden Sun is one of the most slickest, most responsive menus I've ever experienced in video games. Um, in terms of like my favorite menus out there, I'd probably say like Shadow Hearts Covenant and then Golden Sun are probably like the two just most satisfying menus to navigate. Great sound effects and great overall response time. Love them. Okay, so this is one uh, depth, uh, one part of the depth of Soul Sanctum. But by, by placing the the green orb into one statue, a door opened, and we can go deeper. What's wrong, Creighton? So yeah, he. Uh, but Creighton's been here before, apparently, and it didn't quite look the same as this. But I guess he's never been this deep into the ruins. So. Let's see if we can't find out more. We should help him, absolutely. Now, saying yes and no doesn't really affect story, um, but you can get either some fun flavor text by saying yes or no. Um, but generally, saying yes is fastest in this game because the animation of a nod is a lot faster than Isaac shaking his, his head. But there are, like, I think there's two instances where I say no. There's one that, that is genuinely faster, and there's one that I like because it, it the, the, the flavor text is just better. So I say no on one one particular dialogue box. Um, this is a lot of encounters, uh, but it's fine. It's okay. Please, thank you. Okay. Now I don't need any experience really from this place. If I was to get one experience point, literally just one. Um, I would actually gain two levels from the first mandatory fight of the run um, rather than one, but it's not really worth the time time taken to get one experience point just yet. So I will get some experience and 
push that generally, but um, it's one of those like things, I guess. Experience does kind of matter at places, but uh, I'll try to explain that as I go. Uh, retreats, no, you, there we go. So what I just did there, this is a really, really cool thing generally, because synergy, like the magic powers of this game, are not just used for combat. They're also used for puzzle solving. So I have a variety of things like move, which moves things. Um, I also um, hotkeyed retreat. You can hot treat a hotkey two spells to the L and R buttons, and I've done retreat to L and move to R. This means that I can use commonly used spells really quickly without having to navigate the menu. Uh, which makes certain puzzle solving really, really quick and is very, very handy in general. Having retreat on on a hotkey is incredibly important for Golden Sun speedrunning. Specifically, the first two games and not Dark Dawn because Dark Dawn kind of fixed the issue, or the issue or the, the the trick, I guess we have with retreat, um, retrick or retreat. Um, but you won't really see retreat in full force until Mercury Lighthouse. So there is that. But now we're going to get into like a, probably the heaviest part of cutscenes in the entire game now. Um, this section's about 13 minutes of, of dialogue for the most part. Oh, heavy. Um, it is quite a lot. Um, thankfully, of the three hours, let's say 40, that this run is, about an hour is cutscenes, and the majority of it is in this intro. Of this like 42 minutes, I think it's about, yeah, like 30 odd minutes of cutscenes. So like half of the cutscene is in this intro, and then the rest of it is sp spread out across the game. But yeah, so in this de in the in the deepest recesses of Soul Sanctum are two rooms, one um, with a a monument to the sun and a, and a glowing uh, gold aura, one with a monument to the moon with um, the with a, 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 a I guess a borealis of some kind um, and a, a, a blue hue. So many moons ago, Saturus and Minardi came into this room and tried to find their way through this final puzzle of Soul Sanctum, but couldn't quite manage it for some reason. Um, and that's because they didn't have the ability to fix this trick here. On the right-hand side, if I was to move the statues, it would start it would start flipping the moon and sun symbols. But without this particular puzzle completed and the light shining on that to create a lock, it would it, it actually causes a self-defense mechanism of Soul Sanctum to basically unleash the like the horrors of the volcano of Mount Mount Aleph, and that's what happened. So Taurus and Minardi weren't smart enough to figure out this puzzle. Or at least they didn't have the, the the manpower. If you do get it wrong, because Craden's waiting down here, he sees something goes wrong and says, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. You can't do this until you get it right. And he's like, all oh, right, you're onto something. So Saturus and Minardi didn't really have the uh, ability to solve this final puzzle. And that's why the storm happened all those years ago. But yes, as you can see, the light is shining on the moon and it's swapping the sun and the moon over on the central uh, tablets there. And what is that going to do, I wonder? Any guesses? Going to swap the sun and the moon in the sky. In the sky? In well, real life. In real life, yeah. <laughs> Let there be light. Everyone in the north of Sweden and generally in like Norway and Finland. That's right, yeah. Please. So this is this is going to be like uh, the like the ocarina of not ocarina of time, the uh, oracle of seasons, oracle of thing, where it's just going to switch night and day, right? To a degree, yes. To a degree, yes. Um, but yeah, so we want to push all of these uh, lo lo lovely statues on. I f I keep fe uh, feeling, and I'm not sure how many of the speedrun community for Golden Sun but, um, agree with me, but I feel like these statues are, are pushable much faster. And the cooldown on pushing them is so much quicker than regular um, things outside of this place. Anyway, so what, what does happen is this room is no longer dark and broody. This room is glowing with the sun. And the other room, any guesses? Is it going to be dark? You think it's going to be dark? Maybe dark. It's my, so let's find out. Maybe dark. Oh! And now there is a beam of light from the central tablet to the wall. And uh, a doorway to the true final deepest heart of Soul Sanctum, the Sea of Stars. Um, with my favorite soundtrack or like track in all of the Golden Sun soundtrack, Elemental Stars. This, is, this track is incredible. I do not know how Sakuraba did this. Any comments on the rhythm of this, Mr. Taco? 
In, in what regard? Like, whether I think it's good or not? I... I know, I know I, better than the question boys taste in music. I don't even know enough to know the question that I want to ask. Hang on, I need to listen to the monitor there and that's I can get it. You wanna, yeah, you wanna? Yeah, give me a taste of this. We just have four music of, uh, four hours of the music theory while the run is happening. We just get active ratings of all the new pieces that you hear. But uh, the, 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 the thing for me is when I first heard the uh, the the choir kind of kick in, I was mm. like, oh, Jesus, that's coming out of a GBA. <laughs> um, there's an incredible um, rearrangement of this track um, by a fan arranger or a composer who does arrangements. Um, a fan arranger, is that even a thing? <laughs> right. What's his name? I'm, 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 I'm going to push this because I want, pe I want pe people to go and listen to it because it's ab absolutely amazing. Um, it is by Malcolm Robinson. So if you, if you just go to YouTube and put in Golden Sun, The Elemental Stars, there'll be one by Malcolm Robinson. Absolutely magic rearrangement of this track, I would recommend. Also, go and listen to the OC Remix um, soundtrack of Golden Sun. Oh, honestly, I've never heard anything quite like it. Incredible work by a variety of, of uh, composers and arrangers. Is this a true emulation of the sound that the GBA would make, even yeah. though it's on a Wii U? Mm. So yeah, I should mention I am on the Wii U VC, which is, the be I think, the best way to run it, because uh, the Wii U Pro Controller is one of the best controllers I've e ever held. Um, and uh, it um, you can map any button multiple times to any other button. So I have start mapped three times on different buttons, and I'll get into why a little bit later. There you go. That's the, yeah. Yeah. I can touch on like some of the things, but like that moment there is is like often referred to as the anime chord progression, where you go to if you're in a minor key, it's a flat seven, fl flat six, flat seven, the the minor one, um, which is a really nice like emotional developing kind of moment. But then you also go from the tonic minor to the tonic major, which gives it that like raised sound, which is where it gets that real like lightness to it uh, and positivity. So yeah, there's some really nice yeah, harmonic moments that like kind of give like an emotional development to the intentionality behind it kind of thing. That answers the question that I didn't ask. No, thank you. No, I was no. physically unable to form it. So um, what happened right now is Craydon was like, he's basically marveling at what is happening here. Is that in this room, in the heart of Soul Sanctum, um, are lying four elemental stars. The four elemental stars of the four elements, water, wind, earth, and fire. Um, and he gives us the mineral bags to go and collect these. These are the keys that locked the powers of the elements away many years ago when the world was raging. Um, and they are the keys to the elemental lighthouses. Now, Creighton hasn't specifically mentioned that just now. I'm just giving you that information because I can. Um, so um, by grabbing the four elemental stars, it will give us uh, pathways to the other ones. And uh, we're going to go and do that because, you know, Creighton just wants to study them, innocently study them. Right, Gisbert? Go and fetch them. We'll go and fetch the others. Uh, I'm also doing a very minor thing, which is kind of like a little bit of minor movement on optimization that you can jump when you're not fully on the tile you need to jump to. You can kind of do like half tile jumps. We will run half a tile and you'll kind of jump and kind of move the extra half whilst doing the jump. Uh, it saves frames. It's not really worth like trying to get it absolutely immaculate because you're just spending more time trying to get it perfect than just go for it. And if you get it well, you get it well. And if you don't, you don't. So. One more, or two more rather. I can count. So here, just like, there you go, a little bit of a half movement. That didn't didn't get it there. You know, there you go. Small little jumps. Sorry. Extra menu there. So um, we're going to grab three, and then we're going to be intervened by, again, Saturus and Minardi going to show up once again and be like, oh, damn it, some children are smarter than us. Um, that makes me mad. Um, <laughs> and I would have gotten away with the two if it weren't for those pesky kids. Mm. And they're, ba they're going to basically um, show their dominance in strength by being like, no, we have the, a young girl and an old man hostage. Give us the elemental stars. Um, they're not alone, however. Um, Satoris Minardi are not alone, so...
Is it me? Or is my text a little slow? Did I forget to do the menu at the very start of the game? I did not see you do any options menu for a text feed. I was just thinking that a little bit earlier. I was like, something feels a little slow. That's really annoying that I've done it here, because this is one, one of the longest segments of this thing. I'm probably going to get like a 45-minute a intro now, because I didn't change the menu speed at the beginning. Didn't think about that. I don't know why. I've never, genuinely never forgotten that before in my life. Yeah, but it's all the more story to, to fill your boots with. It's not that much slower, really. I don't, don't, don't think there's going to be three minutes difference, but... I don't know. Pistol streamer, man, I can't see the story. Can you slow down? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, obviously, obviously the game is very well voice acted as well. Um, By you. <laughs> well, no, I mean. To be fair, the actual like menuing sounds of this game are very satisfying. We were talking about this earlier with twelve, like just the basic interactions with buttons sound satisfying. Mm. Yeah, twelve and thirteen have got my favorite menu sounds. Whenever, whenever I talk about that, I always talk about KH sounds. KH. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kingdom Hearts menu interaction sounds are just nice. I feel like there's, there's, there ain't, there ain't no ding like a Kingdom Hearts ding. Special the. So that, that, that is a sentence that has entered my ear holes. There's no, um, there's no <laughs> that happened. <laughs> there's no critical HP ringing noise like a Kingdom Hearts critical HP ringing noise. Yes, Pokemon would like to have a word with you. Uh, nah, I, I don't think it's anything more obnoxious than a critical H HP sound effect. Not gonna lie to you. Oh, by the way, this is really important. The guy with the brown hair just took his mask off. That's Felix, um, the guy, um, Jenna's brother, who she thought died many years ago when the uh, rock or the, the Mount Aleph boulder fell on them. Um, yeah. Uh, can you turn the voices off? You can. You can. Oh, I'm not going to. Because they're godlike. <laughs> Uh, so this guy with blue hair as well is a, a, a subordinate or a, a colleague, let's say, of Saturus and Minardi. His name's Alex. Um, he's got blue hair, so he's obviously a water adept because he's blue. Um, he can also fly and teleport and stuff. <laughs> but he doesn't want us. He, he doesn't want to go and get the fourth elemental star himself. He wants us to go and get it, despite having this amazing ability. No, my friend, we want you to bring us all of the stars. Okay, here we go. Now I can actually remember to do this, because I didn't, because I'm an idiot. Genuinely didn't see anyone from the community be like, uh, Blue Bluezer, are you here? Why didn't you tell me I was dumb and forgot my menu? I'm blaming you for this. Can we all just blame Bluezer quickly? God damn it, Bluezer. If in doubt, blame Bluezer. It works. So now the text will go really fast, and you'll be like, why was he not doing this sooner? There's still a lot of text to mash through, so... Would you want to hear my mashing technique? <laughs> yeah, 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 show me some of this. People genuinely think this matters. Um, so I have two versions. I've got the one where you kind of like do this double flickery tap on the L button whilst like holding B. You've got to hold B, because it's the fast way to hold B and then mm. mash A, L, and R. I'll do a double flick on the old L and then just kind of press the A and R whenever I want. But I've got the other one where you got the whole like the old lower arm lock vibrate. Op oh op yeah, you know? yeah. I'm uh, a big fan of that one. You know. Yeah. There's... Or I've got the I can't be asked. Yeah, that's like it's like well, how long does this run for? All right, I'll do. I'll, I'll intensely mash for ten minutes and then just completely AFK. Well, yeah, that's, 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 I mean, like I do like this. Like, having multiple methods of mashing when there are when they are available really helps smashing because you're not sitting there being like. <sighs> For like 15 minutes. Your, yeah, yeah. your mashing technique is dependent on whether or not the color of text on your splits are red or green. Mm. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you, 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 you joke, right? Plexa one, once beat his PB and got a new world record by point zero by point one of a second because he mashed so hard in the final cutscene he got a gold. Incredible. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes these things can matter. Like <laughs> in, in FF9, you do a thing called stutter stepping on the world map, and like the people who are really good at it are saving like five plus seconds per world map screen. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, there's nothing like showing off. Like I don't know what like tendon or whatever it is. Like like right there, the the you know the insertion in the forearm. 
But like, oh, there's some there's some girthy vintage going on right Jesus, here. Jesus, dude. <laughs> that's, that's here or that's in here? On the inside. Uh, I don't I don't know what we are on the inside. On the outside, really. This, uh, Big oh, already Alice, but I don't know. This one here. Yeah. Uh, up up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up top on like the outside is the breaker with the Alice. There you go. There you go. Mm. Delicious. Okay, so now that we've taken all four elemental stars, um, you have now seen the yeah again the the volcano is kind of getting a little bit antsy. It's not happy. Um, but yeah, but basically the people of Wayard uh, for eons have been like custodians of uh, you know this secret of you know of the powers of alchemy and. Um, the four elemental stars, like I guess the people of Vale were the original ones who sealed um, sealed alchemy and the elements and put the um, the stars here in Soul Sanctum. It, and Mount LF is roughly near towards kinda the, the center of the disc-like planet of Wayard. Kind of, not really, but you know, it's like it's definitely center aligned, but it's a bit up a bit. Um, but yeah, it kind of like Mount Aleph, um, Aleph looks over all the world in a way. Um, so yeah. Now, what would a a group of people be protecting um, a secret if there wasn't another secret to uh, exist? And this big old stone ball with an eyeball is called the Wise One. Um, and the Wise One is uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, deity of some kind um, who has been living and, kind of, I guess, like overseeing Wayard from Mount Elif for a long time. And uh, now that the, the um, elemental stars have been stolen by Satoris and Minardi, uh, they're going to try and um, unleash the powers of alchemy on the world and the powers of the, of the elements and, and reopen all the lighthouses. And the wise one's like, you must stop them. Stop them, young boys. Um, and we're going to go on a, a, a rip-roaring adventure around the world to stop the lighthouses from being lit. Right? That's right, yeah. That's the right thing to do? I think so. Cool. I love a rip-roaring adventure. <laughs> they rip, they roar. Um, there's a lot of, like, information and, I guess, like, twists and turns for this narrative that happens in the second game. And I don't really want to kind of say too much about that, really. Um, but suffice to say that a lot of this game's narrative leads you down a path and makes you feel a certain way about the relationship between what Isaac and Ko are doing and what they're trying to do by preventing Saturus and Minari by doing what they're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's it, this is a very black and white narrative, of course. Like, Satoru Minari bad, Isaac good. Mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's definitely it. That's definitely it. There's no twists and turns. So um, the wise one saved us from the eruption inside the heart of Soul Sanctum and Mount Aleph, and uh, now we're gonna get out of here. Let's get out of here. So I use Retreat from the menu. That's what happens when you use Retreat. Retreat takes you back to the beginning screen of a dungeon, okay? Let's go over that one more time, friends. When we cast Retreat, we go from wherever we are to the beginning screen of a dungeon, from the screen that we entered a dungeon from. Because some, some dungeons, in some caves, have two entrances. But the, 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 the screen we entered the dungeon from, Retreat takes us back there. That is important. It will be on the test. Noted. You're gonna break this, aren't we? No, it's it's the thing is the the best joke would be if it literally does that every single time because it, that's what it does. Yeah. yeah. Boy wouldn't lie to us like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this is the last kind of bit of like proper um, chatty stuff. Now, I when I, as a kid I didn't really know that the Shining Force devs were the Golden Sun devs, but I had some thoughts and some theories as to the, this game reminds me of something. Um, one of them I can't really show for a bit, maybe like, I want to say like 20 minutes I can't show the, the other one, but what's going to happen when we go, we're going to go inside this like little sanctum here and have a chat about what's happened up on Mount, Mount Aleph and send Isaac and Garrett on their way on their new adventure. But um, Camelot Software Planning or Sonic Software Planning or Sonic CD, uh, Sega CD4, whatever they were called in many years, they like, they, they like to do this, not that red thing, this. And what this is, is this is basically characters telling a story and recapping it, and it kind of shows it to you by the by the, the sprites animating and running around. And it's like, look, we got these stars. And Garrett's like, oh, look, honestly, we were, we were looking around. It was amazing. We got really sad. And then we were like trying to figure things out, and we placed some things on some jobbies. 
um, and then they run around. So it's like it's nice storytelling through character action that you don't you, you don't need to like. You know, in like modern games, they go, let me tell you what happened, and it fades to black and comes back and they go, oh, wow, that was intense. Um, they do it through action, and I really like that. Um, but yeah, but Camelot have done that since, like, I don't know, Shining Force 2. Yeah, but like movie. visual storytelling is really nice. Yeah, and and it's, and it's very... that, that is a shorter way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> in so many words. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, now everyone knows what happened inside Soul Sanctum, and everyone's like, what, you saw a big old flying stone with an eyeball? Please. No one, no one believes them, really. Um, but this, the, the old wise one's like, no, I did, I did see a big old rock in my dreams. Believe me. Um, so yeah, he kind of corroborates the story, or at least uh, the claims of what's going on in there. But, um. Oh, can I smell food? Has food arrived? Yeah, there's, that, that's definitely the, the whiff <laughs> of burgers and chips. It has not quite made its way over here, but I'm that's definitely fine. getting signaled from your couch. I don't mind. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. I, I, mean, I can't eat whilst playing this game. It's, it's that is fun. the unique smell of salt and vinegar, definitely. See, if it came 10 minutes ago, you could have just handed the controller over and went, Star, mash. And it'd have been fine. Yeah. The, the, you can actually... Uh, we do allow... Um, we do allow turbo controllers for, for this game. Um, if you if you mash it like a, a, a speed that's slightly less than optimal, um, so it's like you, you can save your hands. But if you want to get the best time, you'd mash kind of thing. But um, you know, I don't really have a, a, a turbo controller. I believe there's someone who wants to say something. Hello. Hello, friends. I have burgers. Do you oh. want burgers brought to you? Um, I don't. Does but... anyone on the couch want burgers brought? Yes. Okay. Would you like? Yes. A. Uh, cheese and bacon, or a cheese and lots of sorts of onions? The second one. Okay. Uh, would you like anything? Oh, I'll take a cheese and bacon, if you don't Cheese and bacon. So one gravy and one is a minute. Even you better, like? why don't I just come and help you? Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's possible. Yeah, we'll come be a couple sets yeah. of hands. You two sit still, we'll go get stuff. Uh, apologies, buddy. We'll be back shortly. Oh, no. You want some fries? No, no, I'm fine. I, I, I don't eat one. Right. No, no, boy, is it? Water would be amazing, though. Water? A water okay. would be I'll see what I can do for you, bud. A strict hydration regimen when the when the timer starts. Everyone it can't be slowed down by carbs. Hydration, posture check. Let's go. <laughs> I, I literally, his boy just sat up. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why he realized, yeah. Um. Real quick, can we get a posture check on your spare? Nah, let him hang. I would say, if, if, if I'm checking it, it's bad. There we go. It's all he deserves. Yeah, yeah. Also, hello, Mega-Wish. Good to see you again. It's nice of you to pop in. You do incredible work. Thank you. And thank you for being a uh, a partner with us. It's very kind of you. <sighs> Make sure to get those donations. I'd like to I'd like to have some donations read during here. I know that we haven't got really like any major in-game incentives. The Super Boss was is technically possible, but to do it is a lot of extra time. Um, it's like an extra 30 minutes, I think, for me to get through. Because uh, I don't remember all the all the uh, puzzles off by heart, but I do know them. But um, it's like 30 minutes to get to the boss and get down there and, and fight it. So a bit tricky for me to do right now. Um, so I'll just try and focus on on the run. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, our, our next biggie will be, so it, in give or take $500 to unlock the, the ice cream boat challenge, which I'm sure would go down a treat after a set of burgers and fries. <laughs> Noth nothing washes down burgers like six ice creams. Mm. Yeah, I really did lose a little, a little bit of time from not changing the tech speed. Haven't actually done that before, so that is a new one. Um, okay. No. I'm just... Uh, th this run... This run is uh, this route is a little bit new to me. So there's like two menus that I don't know off by heart. It's stressing me out. It's really annoying. Every other one fine, but there's just two of them where I'm just no. I don't know how you feel. I, I, I'm not I'm not a note runner. I don't like running with notes. So for me, it largely depends on the length of the run, typically. Like, but or if I'm focusing on one game. So like when I ran FF7 for like the first year, like I could do that from memory all the way through, and that's like seven hours long. And when I ran FF9 exclusively, I could have done that. But now nowadays, I do a lot of reading. Yeah, that's fair. 
I think it, I just I think it's like the actor in me to be to, to be a bit of a, pre a pretentious dick. Um, I when I when I'm doing my theatery stuff, I like to you know I have to learn my lines off by heart. So I'm, I'm used to kind of that process of memorizing sequences and you know, and like and segments. You know, like with, with with when when doing a play, it's like I know what my lines are because I'm physically doing a specific set of movements, or I'm in a certain scene, or I know what's coming next. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. It's I mean like like rule number one is like what's my cue line? Okay, who's on before me? And that you follow the story. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, as it is. No, absolutely. But I think I mean the, the the primary reason is presumably because of just the amount of games that I'm yeah. running at a time. Welcome. We've done the intro. Yay! Woo! So what best to begin the actual game is more cutscenes! Yay! This is Flint. Flint is a legend, I have to say. Um, he does learn from his mistakes. Um, he is a tutorial Ginny. He tells you exactly how the gin system works. He's a beast because it's actually a genuinely good, good um, thing. Here we go, Gin. When you get a Ginny, they have a name. His name's Flint. And uh, they'll generally join in what's called standby mode, right? You can move Ginny and give different Ginny to different characters, right? Now, when you set them, you gain the abilities of that Ginny. So, as you can see, uh, you gain stats um, generally by, by equipping. Now, when you equip Ginny and you have them in set, and their name is white, as you see on that screen, they're set, you, they give you stats, um, and they also increase your, uh, your class. For every two elemental Ginny you have, you will basically go up in classes. Now, a big part of the way that this game works in terms of scaling is not via levels. Uh, that's fine, thank you, cheers. Um, the, the, st the, the stats you mostly get are by classes and class percentage bonuses. So for example, Squire is 110% for every single stat, and then Knight is 130, uh, um, Gallant is 150, Lord is 170, and then Slayer is 190. But you never see Slayer in Golden Sun 1. Um, and then you can do that with uh, with other characters and like mix and match elemental classes. Now, when you're in battle, as Flint showed you, you can use a Ginny and use it, its powers. Flint does an earth aspected physical attack. So your physical attack is a bit stronger and does earth damage. Uh, when you use a Ginny, they'll go red. You'll lose the stat bonuses and maybe lose a class, but they'll be ready to summon. And then by summoning them, you'll do big AOE damage. And then if when they're summoned, they need one turn to go back to set. So set, you're gaining their abilities. Stand by, you don't gain their abilities, but you can summon them. And then resting when you're waiting for them to come back. That's the order of a, a Jin rotation. Um, and they're amazing, really. Some Jinny abilities are just nuts good. And the, this run is only possible because of the Jin system in this way. I have done a Jinless playthrough where I don't collect any of the Jin apart from the ones that are forced into the party. And I've beaten the game in about 12 hours. Um, I think I can do it much faster, but I haven't actually rooted it. Um, but yeah. So our boys heavy in the mash center. We've got $20 from J. Crow. Good friend of mine, or at least certainly was. Goosebert missing his friend Mitako and, and would like to sit next to him on the couch. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Goosebert may want that, but I don't. <laughs> so I reject the comment, but I accept your gracious, gracious donation. Uh, we'll take your money, but not, oh. not your request. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we have $5 from Nuja Bears, wishing you the bestest and bestest of luck on the run. Oh, 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 oh we've just dipped Goosebert in his natural habitat of water. Uh, is it next to me or next to Mataco? Me, obviously. Thank you. It's like, I'm trying to do a speed Sorry, run here. Sorry, I'll try and sign more than though I won't sound enthusiastic. Off he go. No, no, he he wants it. Psy Psyche Gooseberry. It's, it's what he wants. <laughs> He's just really... Oh, gosh. Oh, the poor goose. If I just uh, take him by the neck. Maybe it's the cushion. The cushion? I would take by the next off the Cushon! <laughs> Cushon! Good episode of a good show. <laughs> um, so, we ran into Vault on the way in. Um, some rich guy was like, Oh, I need to go home! And then he couldn't go home because there was like a bridge down. Um, the Coke's yours, the water's mine. Um, and then basically, we went into Vault because he couldn't go south. So he went north to, to another place full of thieves. Don't ask why. Rich people aren't always the smartest. Um, and we went into Vault and we found this young, weird kid called Ivan, who can read minds. Um, he is um, 
Hammett's ward, I guess. Um, and Hammett was all, I'm going to look after this kid, but Hammett had a rod, as in like a staff, a weapon, uh, and that, that um, Ivan was responsible for having lost. So um, Hammett told Ivan to stay in vault and get back that, 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 that staff because it's important to Hammett. Uh, so I'm going to go and pick up this mint. Uh, the mint increases agility, and that's good. I should also note as well that in that downstairs segment of the inn was a young woman who was uh, in the side room of the inn. Um, please be aware that that woman was there. It's very important. Um, the, the, the reason I think it's important, not to the story at all, but, well, kind of to the story, um, is I really applaud Camelot's attention to de detail, like specific moments and segments in game or in like the world building that really like showcases their attention. Um, so yeah, um, that woman was that woman was downstairs, and outside of the inn there was a man. There was a man outside of the inn, and there was a woman inside the inn. Uh, we just, just had to capture with a fun little mini game the uh, the thief. Just kind of make sure to push him into the corner, and then Ivan surrounds him, and you can do some mind read. Uh, Ivan finds out that it was those thieves who stole every all the items from the people of Vault, including this uh, weapon that uh, Ivan lost. So we're going to quickly run to the left very quickly, because just to show you, there's no woman. She's not here. Where is she? She's outside. But she looks to the left. She looks to the right. She can't find the guy, so she just shakes her head. Where is he? I just like that because the guy was there and he is now missing. She's wondering where he is. He's here. He's been tied up. But I think it's just nice to kind of have that like developing like village design where the woman inside the inn goes outside to look for the guy because she couldn't see him and doesn't know where he is. And that is a kind of like a moving signal that something's different on the screen to let you know that, that the ladder is now free to climb because he's no longer there. Um, I just like that kind of stuff. Maybe I'm overvaluing that, but... I think it's a real treasure. I think I do think it happens more in handheld games and consoles, certainly in my experience, where the world actually changes and adapts to things that are happening. Mm. And you get, again, it's more of those visual indicators that something has happened. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> Camelot do it a bunch in all their games. Loads of tiny little things like that that I love. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to let you go, yeah. And even if you say we'll let you go, they're like, what? No! <laughs> you can't let us go. You must be joking. And now they're going to fight them. So this game has the sickest menu. I'm going to try and be good at it. I can't guarantee I will be good because I'm not Plexa. Um, so I mentioned that I have start and select uh, like uh, put to like three different buttons. And that's because I do what's called menu gliding. When you press left and right in the menu and then hit start select, it doubles the input. So I can actually like glide past the menu really, really quickly. Oh, you bastard. Uh, herbs are bad. Herbs are bad. We don't like seeing herbs. There are other ways to do it. You can do like you can do like fighting game inputs by like rolling, like doing quarter circles, or like shuriken inputs and stuff. I'm gonna do this actually. Uh, I can't do that. Ugh, messy. Cool. Not a great fight. All the herbs got used. Now that fight is pretty much down to how many herbs get used by the bandits. They can either attack, uh, tremble, defend, or they can heal. Um, the the main boss can also do a move called like uh, quick slice. I think it's called, uh, which is from the bandit sword, um, and it allows you to kind of like get either one or a double hit proc, which kind of deals a lot more damage. And if that happens, you're in danger, but it's mostly fine. Um, Anyway, uh, so th th this game has a really, really cool mechanic that we never actually see in the speedrun, and it makes me cry. At least in this game. It happens a lot in TLA, because TLA is just so godlike. It's unreal. Um, but w w weapons can have two types of crit. Generic weapons will have a regular critical hit where the game, like, zooms in on the character, and they go, boom, which is really cool. 
But uh, unique weapons, and like legendary weapons, or whatever you want to call them, uh, rare weapons, they have what's called unleashes. Um, and basically, the, the text says, the weapon lets out a howl. Um, insert weapon here, like the elven rapier let out a howl. Vorpal slash! And then it kind of like does this cool animation where like the screen goes black and like a green slice comes through the screen. But loads of weapons have these unique animations uh, set to them based on their unleash. And it's really effing cool. <laughs> I remember being a kid and just being like, that is the sickest thing. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I believe the kids would say it's Kino. I believe that's the phrase. Is that, is that, is that the phrase? Where are these cuts and what is well, I mean, I mean, I know uh, there are other flames. Uh, um, other words like flame, fire, and cold, and raw, and hard, and all these kind of cool words that kids use. To are you trying things. to say fire? Fire. Well, I, I did, did say that in that's, that list. That's flame roar. Yeah, no, no, it's flames, bro. Like, oh man, that's flames. I don't know. Yeah, there's a word that begins with the letter G that I shall not say that they say to make things good. I'll tell you when you're little. No, not good. Okay, you <laughs> yeah. uh, for the youngest one. You are actually very old. <laughs> I am like. I should note that I am an old man. Uh, I am not down with the kids I'm or meme he or meme heavy. Though. I'm sorry. I can confirm that Star was born 45. 45. It's the real number. Runs in the family. Um, he's the only one that runs in my family. <laughs> are you saying that none of you have ever run in your life? No. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, lit. That's a good one as well. That's ancient. That that was litty. That's lit. Um, anyway, um, the uh, basically the unleashes are really cool, and um, they they didn't originate this in sh in Golden Sun. It actually came from Shining Force Three. Now I'm going to mention Shining Force Three a lot because it is a genius game. And if you think you like um, strategy RPGs and you haven't played Golden Sun One, Two, or, uh, Shining Force One, Two, or Three, then you don't like um, SRPGs. That's just that's just life. Um, go and play them. They're godlike. Um, but no, there was a really cool system where like weapons had, or characters could learn unique <coughs> crits based on their weapon, and it was really, really sweet. And they kind of like improved upon it in Golden Sun, basically. Um. Anyway, I am a massive fanboy of Camelot. I will not stop. Just go and play Shining Force 1 and 2 and 3. Just do it. <sighs> do you know what on fleek means, Bowie? Uh, I do. I remember that one. That was a, cl that was a was cracking, that? I would, cracking. I would say it's classic. Classic. Okay, cool. Here we go. I'm going to heal now because I genuinely have had Garrett die twice on the run to the next dungeon because he is rubbish. Um, Garrett is a tank, but he's crap. Uh, I've never seen a tank worse than Garrett. I'm going to check. Did I get this? I didn't. Um, as long as I get it now. Um, so I'll re I will talk about <coughs> tanking and stats like that because it doesn't matter a little bit. Um, just going to grow here and grab this Water of Life. Water of Life is effectively a Phoenix down. It revives characters. But it's not like purchasable. You can get like, I think eight in this game in total. I think it is. They cost 3000 coins. They're really hard to get. And you can, majority of them are found in chests. You don't get many. Um, so I did grab one here. Um, so yeah, um, there, are, there are four kinds of characters, right? You've got a DPS, you've got a tank, you've got a healer, you've got a magic DPS as well. So Isaac is meant to be the damage dealer. Garrett is meant to be the tank. Uh, meant is, I mean, I mean, he's really stretching the concept of tank, I guess. Um, floor tank? Uh, he's crap. Um, Ivan is the magic damage dealer, and then a character called Mia, who we're going to meet a little later, she's the healer. There are two tanking stats in this game. HP and defense. The damage formula for Golden Sun, for physical damage, this is, physical damage is attack minus defense divided by two, which means that every two points of defense, <laughs> you take one less damage. Um, when you level up, you generally get one or two defense, but you get like six to eight HP. And if you're on a two to one variable of what's better, like H two HP is like basically equivalent of one defense if you're thinking about it or whatever. It's like HP is doubly as good, like almost quad four times as good as defense basically, and you're getting like four times the amount of depending HP. On, depending on how many hits. Well, I mean, making, do, because do, defense is a uh, flat damage reduction. Well, it, it's attack minus defense divided by two, so two defense is one is minus one damage when you take when you take physical damage. Yes. So two defense is minus one damage, but taking gaining one HP means you have one more HP. Yes. Yeah, so so it's basically, a, many, eight, many HP many. is like four times better than defense, and you get four times the HP as you do in defense. They gave Garrett really high defense, but not that much higher HP. So the main tanking stat he doesn't have much of. So he doesn't do his job. <laughs> like, he's just crap. 
I don't know. You are uh, set. So I have, um, sorry, on standby. I have Flint on standby because I want that fight. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm going to use Ray. I'm going to use Venus. That will clear the fight. Uh, and that will that's the best experience in this dungeon. Um, um, and that gives me level three on, uh, on Isaac and a little bit of extra experience as well. So I'm not actually going to take any more fights in this dungeon. I needed to get to level three because it allows me to outspeed the next fight I have to take. Um, but I'm going to run from everything else. So running is faster, quote unquote. Um, I hate that phrase because of this. Running is faster. Don't die. Okay. So, um, Ginny. I've mentioned that we get them, but how do we get them? You can find them in villages uh, or in dungeons. If you find one in a village, you grab it and it's yours. If you find one in a dungeon, you have to fight it. Um, and Ginny, when you fight them, are roughly the same kind of level as the enemies you're fighting in the area. However, they have one spell that is a tier above every other like enemy in the area. So they have one ability that's like stronger than the rest, which makes them a little bit scary. Don't kill me. That's a lot of damage, dude. Are they more unique situational abilities, or is it like they have a fire instead of a just, fire? It's, well, it's just sheer damage, yeah. But like there, there are a variety of moves in this game. I haven't really talked about spells because you don't really have like fire, fear, Faraga kind of thing. You know, it's like you do have that, but you have loads. So, for example, um, Isaac as an Earth ability has like Quake, Earthquake, Quake Sphere, three tiers of like yeah. AOE um, Earth. Then you got Spire, Stone Spire, or Clay Spire, Stone Spire, three versions of that, and they all have like different like inherent strengths and PP costs. So the, generally, the higher the PP cost, the more powerful the spell is. Um, and also the AoE changes, and I'll, I'll describe that in a bit, but um, here we go. So I've got to fight this guy. So Flint, attack, Ray. If Ivan takes damage, I have to defend with him. Okay, we're good. Ah. Uh. Uh, so Ivan's fine now. So there's a move called Blast that he does, which is the one spell that's like a little bit better than all of the others. So he has like Flare and he has Blast, and Blast is the stronger, um, is the stronger one. So yeah. There we go. Nice and easy. Uh, didn't take much much damage. Now when you defeat a Ginny in battle in like the world map or in dungeons, you get them. They join the party and thumbs up emoji. Um, and now I'm going to basically slowly uh, get myself an entire um, array of little chibi monsters to fight for me because they're very, very powerful. Uh, that's essentially what this whole run is about, is powering up by grabbing Ginny and then blowing enemies up by using Ginny. Let me go. Damn it. There's a part of me that wanted to kind of like start with it on standby, so you can like summon, attack, and then use Flint and have it ready if you want to kind of like destroy another fight, but not worth it really. Uh, okay, so that's Goma Cave down, and we're gonna do. Uh, I, so I was talking about stats and tanking because it does actually kind of matter for the very, very beginning. I'm gonna do a quick menu here to get a bunch of uh, like things. I'm gonna sell my really rare revival item, and I'm gonna sell the Bandit Sword for a lot of money, and I'm gonna buy big swords, which give me. 35 extra attack, which is about 17, uh, 18 extra damage. And then I'm going to buy a bunch of defensive items. So I'm taking like 17 damage right now. So that's 9 defense. It's like, what, minus 4 to 5 damage there. Um, this is quite nice. Uh, I'm going to get helmets as well. Another 9. So that's 9 damage total taken off. So I'm taking 8 now. And then a few extra bits of uh, stuff here. And then... Another nine. So I'm taking like 15 less damage, roughly, let's say. Or you could like 13 if you want to be um, want to be perfect. But um, So yeah, I'm now taking like 13 less damage for Isaac and Garrett. And Ivan's taking like two extra, or two less damage or whatever. <laughs> so he's generally got less defense um, upgrade, but he started with better equipment. So it's kind of fine. But um, that's important to get that, and that's why we sell the Water of Life. That's why we get it. The Water of Life is a very rare revival item, but its money worth is just so much higher right now for where we are in, in the game. 
I see you have the mic in hand. Do you want to add something or no? I just agree with everything you've said. Thank you, mate. I did. I did genuinely did think though when you were like, I was talking about stats. Let me now slander Garrett's name again and tell, say more about how bad he is. Yeah, he's terrible. Um, yeah, generally like the fire is meant to be the the damage dealing classes, and earth is meant to be the all rounder, and then like wind is fast and speedy, and um, you know the blue is all uh, the mercury water ones are all like support and help and helpful stuff. But um, yeah, I take it your your party almost follows that as well then. Pretty much. Yeah. Earth tank, water healer, fire range DPS, air. Uh, when wind is fast and magic focused. Uh, oh, so but, and, this, and this is the thing, right? Yeah. Fire is meant to be powerful, and Garrett's <coughs> fire, and he's crap. He's really, really, really weak in attack as well. He's got no HP and no attack, only defense, and defense isn't the best tanking stat. Um, so now you can you you can go north from the village I was just in earlier called um, Bilibin. Um, you can go north from that, or you can go to the east. Um, so, going to the east is the actual cannon order. You come this way, you can't, you find out that you can't continue. There's loads of people who have been turned into trees, and there's an angry tree. Um, you're meant to find out that there's an angry tree, then go north of Bilibin to get the item that you need to save the angry tree. Um, most people probably went north first, I'm guessing. How many people here went north first? Hands up in the chat if you went north first. Um, and went to the Mercury Lighthouse before coming here, because I certainly did. Um, but you're meant to come here first, because they have a water defense item and a piece of, it, of equipment in this dungeon. So you'll know, you know, you're, I, you're meant to, I, I got it. I was like, why am I getting water defense now? I was just in the water dungeon. Idiot. But you are meant to come here, uh, technically. You, you don't have to, but you're meant to. But we are going to come here, and we're not actually going to do this dungeon yet. We're not going to do any of this just yet. We're going to come back and do this after we go north. But we need to come this way for a very particular reason. I have talked extensively about how powerful Ginny are. Like The Jin system is really strong, um, and it's how we get powerful and can win this run. The next Ginny we're going to get is one of those integral Ginny that just do insane things. Um, in the game, obviously you put all the actions in, and then, you, and then the turn, turn order plays out. Everything that's not a defend, you'll take 100% damage from. But if you defend, you take half damage, which is a lovely thing to do. Um, I'm about to grab a Ginny called Granite. And Granite is a priority Ginny, which means that the character who uses it is guaranteed to go first or get raised to the top of the turn order. If, if another character uses another priority Ginny and they're faster, then there'll be a speed, you know, whoever's faster Speed goes. tie. Uh, yeah, but whoever's faster goes then. Yeah. But um, if, you know... I'm going to give Granite to Garrett, basically, because Garrett's slow as molasses, but he will go first with Granite. And that basically gives everyone in the party half damage. Reduces all damage taken for, for the turn by half, um, which means that I can get three actions out and be defended without defending, which is great. So here's where I'm going to say yes and then no. It's faster to say no there. Less text boxes. Um, now, a small fun fact: if you don't go to the village, uh, if you don't go to the forest first, and you come to this village, that same cutscene plays out here, but it's longer because the characters like walk around the village and wonder why there's like loads of tree people hanging out. <coughs> so it's faster to actually go up to the forest and do the cutscene up there, and then come here. Just, just is. Lot, a lot less damage. I took 16 damage from that last time, or 24 or something. And now I just took four, so uh, yeah, a lot less damage going on there. Uh, that was not bad for an encounter. Two. I could get three encounters here. Um, so I, I, I guess this is kind of important now as well, but um, the way the encounter rate works in this game is there's like, there's loads of different rates. Now this is obviously a thing, but Golden Sun rates are a bit interesting. This, this is not unique to Golden Sun, but they have like a window. So let's, uh, this is not the actual numbers, but I'll give you some like fake numbers to get, uh, to understand the concept. Imagine there's four rates, rate one, rate two, rate three, rate four. Rate one has a minimum step count of five, but a maximum step count of 10. But rate two has a minimum step count of 10 and a maximum of 15. So whenever you like enter a screen where there are encounters, you, the game will pick a rate. 
and then you just run as far as you can and see if you get a good, either you can do it in, in small steps, you'll get a, a very quick encounter, or you'll get a really late encounter. What we want to do is we want to get a rate that has a big window, and we go as far into that window as possible. We can't see this, we can't track it, unless you're doing that thing that you shouldn't do. Uh, emulate, just to clarify. <laughs> Don't. Oh, I thought as soon as you were talking thought, about saving yeah, quit. Yeah, I thought you were talking about RNG minutes. I thought you were yeah. just talking about any percent. I mean, you you can do that, but um, but uh, yeah. Um, I thought he was just committing crime. So that 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 was a good rate because I got from the barricade to the village. You can basically sometimes skip encounters by getting good rates and gain encounters by getting bad rates. Mm. That's how it goes. Uh, when does the rate reset? Does it reset after the... It resets after every battle, of course, but also when you go from a zone without battles to a zone with battles. Yes. So leaving a village um, or and going from the overworld to a dungeon because there's different battle tables going on there. You don't retain the rate from the overworld in a cave, for example. Yes, but I was thinking if it doesn't change on each battle, it may get to the point where if you walk onto a screen and take five steps and get an encounter, it may be worth just resetting the screen for a different rate. But uh, well, you works. wouldn't know that, yeah. You yeah. wouldn't really know. Uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put uh, you there and then you there. Uh, so I'm going to kind of quickly heal as well. I'm going to put uh, um, Isaac into... The, I'm going to show why. He goes into Apprentice and gains four agility. Um, this is one of the few strats I actually added to this route. <laughs> Um, by giving um, Isaac pretty much a full level up of agility, it means that he can outturn certain enemies. Uh, not yet, though. He ne when he goes up one level to level four, he'll outturn these oozes. And it'll be fine. Oh, Jesus. As somebody who hasn't played this game, these menus smooth. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like, that looks really responsive. Then again, the GBA was quite good for that. Yeah, it was, yeah. There we go. Um, you, you'll also sometimes hear like a little like ting when I'm running around. That's a Ginny that's in rest coming back to being set. Um, I need to essentially always um, reset my Jin to be summoned or ready to summon. So I'm basically running without my Jin set on me and giving me power and stats. I'm always going to be running low HP and low stats and hoping that I can summon and blow things up with summons. Um, for the most part. That might change. Um, what do you mean by a Ginny rests? So after they summon, they go... So they, when they're standing by, they're like ready to summon, as it were. Um, uh, you're going to attack there, and then you're going to go there. Um, so yeah, they, when their name is in white, they're set, and we're gaining stats and class powers. When they're standing by, we haven't got their powers, but they're ready to summon. When you summon them, they go into rest, when their name goes yellow. So I can show you here, their name is yellow. Um, when you hear that ting, they're ready to... They, they go back to set, and they're ready to go again. Uh, attacks first, I'm out of here. Whew. So does that mean that you either have them giving you stats passively, but can't summon them, or you don't get stats off of them, but you can summon them to do all yeah, the yeah. damage? It's yes. a, when, when they're set, you can also do an ability with them. Every single Ginny has a built-in ability. Okay. So when they're set, you can, you can use them, and they give you stats, but when you've used them, you lose their stats. By the way, I'm not going to move this snowman. But it is going to lose its cap. What the hell? Um, That's so rude. This, this is a weird thing. Now, you can only move that snowman to the left. There's nothing else you can do with it. So it assumes you've, you've moved it. <laughs> um, yeah, the snowman's meant to be in the way so you can get this, this uh, Ginny here. I'm a big fan of a system that rewards you in different ways for interacting with the system. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's always risk reward in everything you do, you know? Yeah. Um, so again, I'm going to mention Shining Force 3 because it's an amazing strategy RPG. Um, I know where this fairy is from. Uh, so this is the Ply Fairy. Her name is Primula. Um, Primula is a character in Shining Force 3 Scenario 3. Um, she's a fairy that you get given. Um, by uh, this character. She basically, she, she's like, I'm going to join you on your quest to defeat the Vandals. Um, but that is the same sprite that Primula has in Shining Force 3. Um, so it's very nice to have a very obscure strategy RPG referenced in a very obscure handheld RPG. Um, but yeah, her name's Primula. She's great. She's amazing as well. She's a, she has like attack buffs and heals. She's nuts. Uh, but yeah, th that was Mia with the blue hair. She's our healing character. Um... Do not ever forget this. I've done that before. 
I need that bottle. Um, what was it, did you say upside down in this place? Yeah, was it Mercury Tower? Mercury? Yeah, we're in Mercury Lighthouse. So let me just get, get to a cutscene and I'll do it. All right, I will get my timer ready. Really? Uh, can we get a refresh on the stream so we have a timer as well? Jesus Christ. Right, on your, on your, oh, you've, you've gone. Okay, here we go. Time has started. This is really uncomfortable. I won't lie. So, like, the first time I was like, yeah, this is fine. And then I got up and I was like, oh, I feel like I might have a hernia in my stomach that I didn't know existed. Oh, Look great. That core. Mm. I'm not sure if my mic's coming through either, so that's great. You're you're fake. I think you're doing well. But, yeah, my, uh, my neck is in an unhealthy way today. Great. Anyone want to, like, put, like, a... Like move the table close to me so my head's about like balance or something. I mean, I can, I can. Uh, do you want some? I can give you physical support. That'd be lovely. Just uh. Thank you, mate. Just say if it's uh, too much. Uh, yeah. That's is fine. is the distance between his head and the floor exactly one goose wide? Oh, actually, yeah. Would the goose butt be helpful? That's not even a bit. Yeah, yeah. Would goose would would, would goose butt fit? Place him upon the goose. Gus is giving actual support oh, towards please. runners. Uh, Ramses, uh, defend. Kieran. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that couldn't have been more perfect. Can we get a shout out to Gusbert. Shout no. out to Gusbert. No, uh, no, 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 no. Gusbert is our hero. Hush tackle. So what I did there is I did Ramses and and uh, Kieran. So uh, an, a tier two uh, summon and a tier two fire summon. Uh, and that killed the, the lizard man. I need to just do a little. There we go. Uh, there we go. Cool. Uh, and he needed to get that tick back. It's very important. So uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, where is my healing? Is that move? Uh, where, where, where's my HP? Yeah, I do need to heal. Oh no, I can't do it because I haven't got that. There we go. Uh, heal. There we go. Uh, how is my PP? Is 13. Okay. 11, 7, 5, 3. Okay, uh, yeah, so I've gone below 6 PP. Now, retreat costs 6 PP, um, and I can't cast it if I use it from the menu. Um, but if I use it from the hotkey main, um, screen, then, then, then great. Let's jump across here. Uh, right, so... Uh, Herbs, give to Ivan. No, 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 no. Give to Ivan. All of them. Uh, nut, give to Ivan. Mint, use Ivan. Apple, use Isaac. Uh, herbs, give Mia. Uh, I have. How much PP is that? Six. On whom? Oh, oh, and I them. It was yeah. six, that's four. Retreat, yes. Did not work, so I haven't gone anywhere, but I have gone somewhere. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, to, the, to the entrance, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't really explain that because I'm upside down. Um, it's hard to explain it when I'm, when I'm upside down. But uh, basically, because I tried to use it, the game couldn't actually send me anywhere because I didn't actually have enough PP. Um, we're gonna go, actually, we're gonna go defend, defend, uh, Q in. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't actually use it, so it, the game doesn't send me anywhere, but because I've said yes, the game's memory thinks it can send you somewhere. So it, the, the game's memory is putting me back on the original screen in the game. So when I go through a door that may have like a value attached to it, it's not the value I think it is. Um, and then basically, let's say a door has a value of two, but it, has, but it takes you to somewhere else on the main screen than the screen I'm on. And so you're gonna, you can inherently uh, warp through dungeons. Uh, I'm going to do Kirin here. I'm going to defend. I'm going to have you use Ramses on the other one. I Honestly, this is too hard to like actually do the proper strats, so whatever. How, how, how long have I gone for so far? Four minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, really? Perfect. That'll do. It's not ideal, but it'll do. That's one. That's two. 
Uh, I'm going to go Forge for Fever and reset Fever. Oh, and also Fizz and Gust. There we go. Okay, how are we doing? We're good. Don't back attack me. 10 seconds, boy. Uh, fever. Kirin cannot be used because I don't have uh, all my um, Ginny ready. Now, here's where the Gin uh, the Gin system is amazing. I cannot use Kirin because it's not ready. However, Garrett is slower than Isaac. So Isaac's going to go first here and use Fever. Now I have my Ginny ready. Kirin will come through anyway. That is absolutely bloody brilliant, and not enough games have that level of flexibility. Um, and then Ramsey's to finish. You can like return to yeah, your normal position at your sweet. earliest right, Darius, convenience. Over, sorry, well yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll I'm do tell that. him he's done more. No. Oh. Jesus. Bravo. Well thank played, you. Oh, thank cheers. you, Gisbert. Okay. Don't growl at me, Tucker. You're a villain. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't a great posture, I have to say. Ooh. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to go... I need to get Fizz onto you. Sleet onto you. Uh, one second. Okay, I'm now going to go through here and go to the top of the lighthouse. Yay! Okay, so now normally you're meant to get here by like uh, using ply on a statue, and it causes like this cutscene where the lighthouse is lit properly in like some real f nice fashion. Um, but because I glitched my way up here using the retreat glitch, this cutscene is broken because what happens is when certain things um, ha like are like played, the character models are they're like think of like of the characters like actors, right? They're placed in different positions. The cutscene that has the lighthouse being lit places all the characters that are meant to be on this on this cutscene in position. So they're not there. There are meant to be characters on this lift on the left-hand side. Like, I think Minardi's there, Jenna's there, and Craydon's there, and Felix. But because of this cutscene, they weren't placed. And because they weren't placed, the cutscene text boxes can't play properly. So now we now get Jenna's face. Um, and because Jenna is best girl, and she is absolutely amazing, the opposite of Garrett, um, we get multiple Jennas, in fact. Um, so we're going to get not one Jenna face, but two Jenna faces. Um, more Jenna! There's, um, time, there's times where she's perfectly overlaying someone else's face, I think? Yeah, almost. Pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, so this fight is Satoros. This is a cool fight. Um, ready for a hot take? The uh, the Satoros Minardi theme is better than the Satoros theme, but this is a more iconic fight because it's the first Mercury Lighthouse fight, or the first like, Lighthouse. Anyway, um, this fight is a patterned fight. He has eight moves. Attack. Heat Flash, Fireball. Attack, Fireball, Heat Flash, Attack, Eruption. I do not know where he's going to be, but he will start somewhere on that list. From that, from the second turn, I will know exactly where he is. If he uses Eruption first, I know exactly in the first turn where he is. Now, I've set it up so I have uh, um, Ivan in a Tier 2 Fire class. So he has a nice stat bonus from that, so he won't die from things. Um, so I'm going to start by using Ramses, Granite, Slash, Nereid. Um, so Granite is going to go first. Priority Ginny from Garrett to give everyone half damage down. Nereid will come out to put the, the Water Ginny on reset, and they're going to come back from recovery first. Uh, Slash is going to come out just for ec extra damage. There's nothing else we can do with Ivan. We might as well do it. Heat Flash. Okay, fine. That's completely fine. It's single target damage. This is either going to be attack or fireball next. If it's um, attack, I don't know. We're going to have to see. Uh, so let's do attack, attack, herb, prism. So what do we got next? Fireball would suck, I'm not going to lie, but... Attack, okay, cool. This is going to be... Eruption? Yeah, eruption next. Um, so eruption. because that's kind of, that is kind of bad because I'm on this turn, eruption would kill anyone that's not half damage. Double targeted. That is the worst I've ever seen in my life. Okay, that is bad. I have genuinely never seen a, a double target like that on Heat Flash into fight into, in, into that. Um, I should have healed with, with Ivan, actually. Ivan would survive one eruption, I think, um, and that was the only only thing. Yeah, that, that is a that is a scary one. Uh, so we're in danger here, but we should be okay. Um, okay, so granite, uh, Venus, and Mercury. Now that that is generally really really bad. Um, 
cool. Uh... Okay, 86. Heat flare. Okay, cool. Now it's going to be fireball, of course. Um, uh, let's defend Herb. Herb. So the way that death works in this game is if you game over, you go back to the, the most recent uh, like Sanctum you're in. Um, and you have to revive everyone, and that sucks. Uh, let's do sleets, nuts, and herb. This is fine. It's, it's going to be a longer fight, but I shouldn't die. Um, I shouldn't, I say. I mean, like, I'm not dealing that much damage right now. You normally deal like 170 with uh, Neri, and I'm only dealing 80 odd with uh, Mercury, so. It might el elongate this quite a bit, and I might run out of healing, but we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I've genuinely never, never had I Isaac die like that before, so that's a fun one. Um, uh, actually, yeah, we have that available. Yeah. Um, let's heal you, and then prison. Uh, so yeah, that tar double target. Yeah, I should have healed with Ivan. Ivan is in like a tier two class, so he can survive stuff. Um, that was that was heat flash, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have attack next again. Uh, sleeps, herb, prison. If I win this, I'm pretty sweet, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the thing is, Isaac has fizz as well, which is an extra form of healing, which kind of like takes off a little bit of the uh, um, the worry. Uh, Venus and oh no 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 no. Oh, you you are out of healing. Okay, great. Um, that's fine. It's not fine. Mia's gonna die if she gets targeted at all. Um, but we're not doing too much damage. Oh, too much bad damage. Yeah, it's not ideal. Uh, what we got? This is over. If I do win this somehow, I'm a, I am a god, but it's not gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> oh. Don't take it all back. We were dead to the. Did the eruption just go off, or was the eruption just about to I feel like we just got gaslit. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Gen that's, that's a Bowie classic, that is. Uh, Gen 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 genuinely thought I was going to die. Um, so that target of Heat Flash into eruption specifically, like if it starts with Heat Flash attack, that's really nasty because you can't. You need like two turns to get Granite back. Um, so that was a bit of an unfortunate one. I, the only thing I could have done is defend on the eruption turn but, and just hope that Isaac didn't get the focus. That was... The other thing I could have done, as I said, is I could have healed with Ivan early and hoped that if he got targeted, he would have enough to tank it because double fire class means that he has eight extra HP, but also extra fire resistance because of the uh, the, the double fire class. Um, so I think he was the only one who could survive it, I think. Or he would at level 7, but because we do level 6 strats now, he uh, is more likely to die. However, um, that didn't happen. Um, and I lost Mia and Isaac. Well, now, that's not... That's not awful. It's a bit of experience lost on Isaac and Mia, but like I can just take a couple of extra fights and make up for it. So, um, but yeah, bit how risky, a bit does, squeaky uh, bum time that was. How does experience work with a uh, dead party member? Is it uh, when a mob dies and it gives a hundred experience? It gives everybody a hundred. Everybody a hundred, yeah. But basically, uh, Mia and Isaac just lost experience. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like it. There's no bonus for Garrett and Ivan. No. Yeah, that's unfortunate then. Yeah, it's fine. I really wish that if you went that when you heal um, via the thing here that you can like well when you, I really wish that like the mercury water could revive people because kind of sucks. Um, I should mention that both Saturos and Minardi are members of the Fire Clan. The only reason we could beat Saturos is because this is the Mercury Lighthouse, the Water Lighthouse, and Saturos is a fire uh, a fire user. So the powers of alchemy and water flowing from the Mercury Lighthouse su suppressed his power and made it easier for us to fight him. There's also another little attention to D detail throughout the Mercury Lighthouse, is that Mia regains or regens PP whilst you're in the lighthouse. Because again, it's it's a water lighthouse and she's a water adept. So her, her, her alchemy and her powers are always being restored or being like topped up. A cool little attention to detail. It's very cool. Hello, you right? Yeah. What's up? Right, so we've, we've got a $15 donation from Anonymous. Now it says Yisk takes the reins. Now one could interpret that as 
Risk takes the or Yusk takes the reins by moving the camera, or that Yusk takes the controller and plays. Um, he hasn't played the game before and wants to play the game himself at some point. We can ask. I mean, I I don't know how I feel about that in all honesty. Yeah, you know? I know. It's like it's just that this segment needs a bit. I, I'm I'm currently in critical condition. It's not mm. a good idea to have him. You're you're hemorrhaging. Him. Yeah, it's not a good position to be in, honestly. Did did you donate for that? No. Would you would you like to to take control at a an appropriate moment that Bowie is not? Like whilst we're slowly bleeding out, would you like to play the segment? Say no. <laughs> I I <laughs> really want you to say yes. Yeah. Mm. Brother kids. O obviously. Brother kids. I think the controller swap makes sense when there's a co-op run, in all honesty. But I think it, it's way more fun when someone's never played the game before. It does affect the run quite well, quite heavily, is the only <laughs> Exactly. Uh, right, I need to go... Let's Damn it, yeah, I'm in trouble. Run, Get safe. Uh, I can't do this menu now. Um, that'll have to do. That'll have to do. Um, yeah, this works. Uh, can, we, can we go for a biggie? Yeah, go for it. A Biggie Smalls. Uh, we've got $128. Woo! Clippity cloppity Ooh. clappity. <coughs> From Vax Herd 143. Oh, Vax. Cheers, buddy. There's, I see Satoros is keeping things interesting, but Bowie the Legend pulling through as always. Good luck with the rest of the run. Thank you very much. Did you, did you just do like a most muscular pose? Is that what I saw? No, no, no. I was just worried about, about, about the fight. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm getting a lot of encounters, and I'm two characters down, so. Tackle, how much would I most muscular from you? I'll get back to you. Name your friend. Better. It's for the kids. I'm aware. <laughs> I, I know what I I know what I signed up for. Oh damn. <laughs> oh dear. Um, Given the core just... workout you got yesterday, you definitely know. Okay, so now I'm going to be making my way back um, to Colima, which is where I was. Um, but now, the reason I didn't revive in the village I was just in is because there's actually a cutscene that plays if you go to that particular sanctum and revive there, because there are two kids in there who are like uh, friends of Mia and they want to talk to her and say goodbye to her before, before she leaves. And we don't want to give them a chance to say goodbye, because that's silly. So we need to just, uh, we need to get out of here and just run away. And then I'm going to revive in Bilibin. Right, so I'm going to quickly hotkey avoid for now. And then avoid, I mean, I don't know if it's actually going to work here because of my levels being a bit weird, but um, avoid works by if your party's average level is higher than the average level of all of the, like the higher of the, of the threat level of the area, you do not gain steps towards your next encounter. So um, because we went over there and got le leveled up a bunch, for a bit, at least. Um, we don't gain encounters here. So, yeah. A lot of Pokemon mechanics in this video game. Is that a Pokemon mechanic? Well, like... Uh, so, like, repels can work based on your level compared to others in some versions, right? In basically every version. Repels, repels work in such a way that you cannot have an encounter with a Pokemon that is a lower level than you. The very cool part about this is that in certain areas there are different Pokemon available at slightly higher and slightly lower levels so you can repel a Pokemon that's exactly level 27 because you want encounters that are available at level 28 but other Pokemon that are only available at level 26 should avoid. This is for you, Jill. This is because Corporate Image decided to kill you one day. I'll save you, Jill. This whole telekinetically grab and move objects as part of an RPG Breath of the Wild really took inspiration here. Yeah. It's like above ground spell thing is very Breath of the Wild desk. Right, okay, so my uh, my avoid hasn't run out, there you go. Um I don't think it's gonna work on this screen. Uh okay, so Colima Forest has a lower threat level on this first screen. So um yeah, on just just on this first screen only. So uh, I should be able to avoid any M encounters here, and now I'm going to start getting steps towards my next encounter here. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, before Camelot made this game, made a little game called Beyond the Beyond, which I think some people are going to be like, that is 
the worst game I've ever played in my life. And I'll be like, that is a good idea executed inconsistently. Um, and one error they made, I'll say this, one error that Camelot made when making Beyond the Beyond is they had a very high encounter rate, but they didn't change it or lower it on puzzle screens. Now, there are loads of steps and areas on these screens where pushing blocks and, you know, generally puzzle solving is. That actually just removes encounter steps. So they really learned their lesson with Beyond the Beyond. I and mean, when, when players are trying to figure out puzzles and navigate hard, like, mazes, giving them encounters is not helpful. So, excellent learning opportunity. Jolly good. So we, we got an, an, an interesting note from the, the production team there, uh, that there was a channel point incentive to release Goosebird, uh, and I've been given express permission to choose what the, the interpretation of that means. So I'm going to release Goosebird into the wild, and I'm just going to throw him out of the building. Um, I'm, I'm certain someone will have a photo of that that will be posted on our social media. So uh, if you would like to follow ESA on X or Instagram or Facebook, um, or if you're not already followed on Twitch, you should uh, probably do something about that. So you can continue enjoy. Get off him. He's going away. Get away from me, Taco. This wonderful event. So I'm just going to go uh, remove a goose. Uh, I'm going to set the, the gooses loose. About this hoose. Save the goose. If, if you don't mind, goose. while uh, while I'm occupied. Channel points is that? Save the goose. <clears throat> what's what's save the, the maximum goose amount quickly. of channel points someone can spend in a day? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're taking his friend away. My friend. Bye, goose book. Oh dear. I'll try and find a place to get uh, bring Yiskin if Yisk wants to do Pro that. But production, uh, I need I the need keys that. to lock Taco out. <laughs> don't yeah. tell him. There is a small technique here as well you can do, which is called instant climb and instant fall, which is um, you kind of want to press when you're like climbing something and you, you're about to get off. If you like push to get off a ladder or uh, on either direction, then on the frame before you actively actually get off, you press the opposite direction. You'll get off, but just go to zip the other way. So you can like I instantly climb long, long things. It's not worth like trying over and over again to get it. But if you want to just like what I tend to do is like, when I get onto something that I'm going to climb, I'll give it one go and see if I can get it right. I'll, I'll try it here, for example. People are talking about um, Goosebert being released and are saying, release the drag goose, completely forgetting about the perfectly placed pun, release the quacken. Release the quacken. A good one. Also, uh, that goose is like actually gone. So chat, you need to like, you don't need to try and save the goose. He's gone, gone. Production, can we get a channel point <laughs> to bring Goosebert back immediately? Uh, it's high priority. Production want rid of the goose as well. This has worked out for them. Never mind, they want rid of production. Oh, <laughs> that goose is gone, bro. I miss him. Okay, so uh, tier two summons across the board will defeat uh, Breeze, our second Jupiter Ginny, uh, who will put everyone into tier two classes for now. Uh, let me just get my docs back because I've lost my notes. This is one of the this is one of the two menus I've forgotten. <laughs> Coming up here. Uh, yeah, there it is. Actually, uh, do I do I remember it? Am I going to be a genius or not? Let's find a way. I'm, I'll I'll try it, and if I remember it, I'm sweet. If I don't, then I'm bad. Do it, Blaine. We believe in you. Well, you got this. Again, not worth trying to go for it over over and over again, but um, I'll try every now and then. There, there, there is a point in the game where I can try over and over again to get it done. It's a very unfortunate place to. Oh my god. <gasps> what are they doing to my purple? They're putting the cat, told you! He's <laughs> 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 no! What the? Uh, right, uh, Flint for Sleet, Fever for Gorge, uh, Gus. No, it's not. Uh, Fizz for uh, Granite Fizz. That should be it. If I'm not mistaken. I'm going to bring Mia to the front as well for this fight. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure if levels are going to make a big difference on the damage rolls that I'm looking for here, but I should be okay. Let's find out. 
Uh, you're going to use uh, Ra uh, no, no, not Ramses. You're going to use uh, is, Kirin. Is this we're going to go Fever. We're going to go Flare Wall. We're going to go Atalanta. Uh, so yeah, uh, Atalanta's going to put. Um, well, that we're going to get that back on rotation. Fever's going to go out. Then we're going to get Kirin out as well. This means that we're going to get Kirin back at the beginning of turn three. Um, I think Is that order right. That uh, should be right. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so now we're going to go uh, Ramses, Flint, Flare Wall, and then we're going to use Ray. So that, that mean now I, Isaac is out turning Mia here as well. So like um, we, he goes first, and then the, the Ramses can come out. So this should be the final turn of the fight. If I'm good, if I'm bad, then damn. Um, right, uh, attack. Fever, defend. I'm also going to attack with you, just because I'm just worried about my damage being a little bit lower. Seven damage, that should be fine. Nice, cool. Um, excellent, there, there, there's the fight. Um, a key caveat to what I just did is I finished that fight with Fever. Now, this is a mechanic that I haven't really, that not many people know about, but is relevant to this run. Um, when you defeat an enemy with the element they're weak against, specifically when you defeat them with a Ginny attack, of the element they're weak against. The enemies would have a chance to flash rainbow colors um, and die, and that's called a rainbow kill. This gives you increased gold and increased experience and increased drop chance. Um, and it's very cool. It only works for Ginny attacks of the element they're weak against. Um, if you don't know how to figure out what an enemy is weak against, you want to look at the punctuation in the battle text. If an enemy gets hit by an attack and it's a full stop, they're strong against that element. If it's one exclamation mark, they're neutral with that element. If it's three exclamation marks, they're weak against that element. So Fever Fire is strong against a, a tree, you'd think. So uh, yeah, there you go. There we go. Okay, cool. Using the Hermes water that we got from Mercury Lighthouse, we can now fix and cure the ailing Tret. What happened to this area was Tret got... Um, after the Synergy Stones, after Mount Ale um, Aleph erupted at, at the beginning of the game, Synergy Stones fell all over the world, and it kind of changed the disposition of some people. Um, and the people of Kolyma usually lived in harmony with the forest and lived in harmony with Tret. But they, as you can see, there are tree stumps around here. The people of Kolyma took their axes to Tret, and Tra Tret fell into a rage and turned all the people of Kolyma in into trees before succumbing to that rage. Um, but we've managed to cure him of that rage with, with some water. Yeah. Okay, that's a thing. Okay, we're good. I'm glad Goosebub got thrown into the, in, into the snow. Excuse me? I'm glad Goosebub got thrown into the snow. You're leaving. I don't know, it's just... One of those I, don't, I don't know how they could do this to my boy. So I both the, both these trees are really magical trees, by the way. So you were saying? Animal cruelty. It's a stuffed animal. Tackle puts some. I wouldn't do that to an actual goose. I would rather do it to an actual goose than a goose bird. Oh, so <laughs> animal cruelty, but I'd rather do it. I'd rather do it do it do it to a real goose. Okay. To say, Lane the goose, gentlemen. I think production is going to start experimenting with our ears for a little moment. So just let me know if something comes through and I'll give you the juicy details of what that is. That does, that came through. That was high quality. Mm. Yeah, thanks so much indeed for everyone who's been uh, watching so far and donated, donated, donated so far. It's very kind of you. Remember all proceeds as well from subs and uh, bit cheers also goes towards the total. So thank you so much indeed for supporting Make-A-Wish. Super lovely of you. And just while production is cooking up a storm right now, I would like to note that with your donations, even if there isn't something that is listed, you can be suggesting ideas to us, you can request things. We are here to raise money for charity and respectfully our dignity is on the line. Anything you want us to do, anything you're looking for production to do, sound files that you'd like to be played on our soundboard. If you want to bring Gusbert back, please. We're willing to do it all for a number. For a number. Uh, uh, um, not yet, actually. Let's do that. 
That's fine. Then you can heal. Uh, PP management is really hard here. Making sure that you have the right spells at the right time. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're actually doing a diversion here. You don't need to do this. A lot, a lot of this game is optional, even though it feels like it's not. This stuff you actually don't need to worry about, but I'm going to go and do it anyway. Um, and the reason for that is... Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, before I do that, I'm going to do this quickly. Um, we're about to get another Ginny, and this is good. we have two of, of every single Ginny. So this is going to be our third Ginny um, of a, a particular element. And it's going to give us access to a Tier 3 summon. So pooling three Jupiter Ginny together gives us a Tier 3 Jupiter summon. And it increases our damage a lot. Um, but it also happens to be one of the fastest summon animations in the game, and probably one of the fastest animations in the game as a whole. It's really, really quick. Um, so let me just do this quickly. That's seven. Uh, yeah, five. So we can do a retreat glitch now with five PP. Uh, and we're into uh, the room where the... Um, so I ran across the, the, the floor, like, or like I hovered. There's, a, there, there's like a bridge there, but you don't need to see it kind of thing. I made an error. Um, I made an error. Oh no, I'm fine. Uh, cool, we're good. Uh, Nereid, Fever, uh, Kieran, and Ramses. Cool. Uh, so this Ginny can run. If it does run, you lose like 40 seconds. You've got to go and back, go back and reset the room and come back again and all kinds of annoyance. But um, yeah, so we're going to be using the Fever into Kirin Finisher again, just to kind of maximize damage. Um, but this is Zephyr. Zephyr is not just good because he gives us tier three. He is also a like a speed doubler. When you use his, his ability, he doubles the party's speed, which is really cool. Um, but we're not actually going to use that that much. It's mostly for the summon, but um, speed double does, uh, does help a couple of fights. Having a few tech issues, or not not tech issues, but tech things sorted here. Yeah, okay. So that's that. We're going to our next dungeon. Now, if you go, when you, when I was in that place, Fusion Temple, you actually do get uh, a new synergy called Force. And if you use Force on those stumps, the, the, the monkeys that are in there jump out, and then you can like, um, uh, you can like, they tell you where to go in the dungeon. But it's not required to do that. The, the, you don't have to do that to make the dungeon complete. It's just so you know where to go. Um, that was an attacks first. Um, so it's just so you know where to go. But because I know where to go anyway, I don't need to worry about that. More logs being, being pushed. Good attacks first there. I mean, I do need some experience now, so it's a bit scary, but... This is really good. That's my second encounter here. Jeez. Is there a backup plan for EXP on your two members that died back in the America? I mean, I one? usually take a few extra encounters anyway, so it's fine. Just uh, for I'm... safety? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I need to be level 13 for a certain point, but I can just get 13 in that area, so I can just, like, take a few more fights at that point. Okay, so the, once the... we get there, we'll start to neutralize then. Yeah, I mean, damage output doesn't really matter too much, because, again, like, I, I only really gain... Because I'm going to be in, like, mostly I'm going to be in base base classes using summons for the most part. Four extra attack is only going to make it, like, two extra damage. So I can offset that by, like, throwing out extra small attacks um, here and there. Now, because Ivan is the Wind Adept, he has a stronger Procne, which is a Tier 3 summon, which is really fast. Um, but if you use a, a summon and you don't finish the fight, you get, like, a little um, elemental power-up. And um, that is uh, slow. So we, so we try to finish fights with um, we try to finish fights with those. So everyone else is going to use attacks, and then Garrett will do the procne to finish the fight. Um, so we don't have to watch the power up an um, power up animation. And everyone else's damage is enough to make up for it. So. See what you mean with that animation being fast? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Can't see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is it intended to be like that? I'm holding B to skip all skip all summon anima uh -huh. animations, oh, or at least it skips it skips as many as they can. And some of them are really fast, as you saw there. And some of them are a little bit slower um, than others. But 
Uh... That's fine. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm whole holding B to skip all battle, um, ba all summon animations, um, uh, uh, and yeah. So yeah, just now that is quite a long, a long summon where the the, the, the tornado appears, the enemies go up, um, and then like Procne fires three like feather bolts into the opponents. Uh, whoops, but you don't see that. Yeah, so if you think that that's a fast um, summon animation, there are some that are really slow. Um. I mean, it's literally on screen for a frame. I think the only thing that's faster is, well, I mean, defend is the fastest thing you can do, <laughs> but it doesn't do anything. But it's like the, I think it's the only thing that's like as fast as like a regular attack. It's just that it's just so fast. So uh, we do like it. So I just grabbed um, one extra item. That was the elven cape or the elven shirt. That, in, that is a, a speed multiplier. So we gave that to um, Mia so she can outspeed the enemies as well. She's a little bit slow. Um, actually, you know what? Let's not do that. That's better. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have done it that way, though, to be honest. Oh, well. I did it that way. That's how life goes. So, yeah, what I'm doing as well is you, can, you have a macro to, like, set or stand by all the Ginny that are, are available that aren't resting. So that's how the menus look so fast. Just I'm quickly holding R and then tapping Select to reset all my Ginny. So, Procne is a very fast tier 3 summon. If you think if you think they're all like that, prepare to be amazed because we have some terrible terrible summons as well in this game. Uh, Zephyr, Fever, Granite. Did I heal? Probably uh, not. Yeah, I just saw you re -equip. Or did I heal? That's the thing. I didn't need to. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh god, uh, Kirin, and then run it. Mm, 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 mm. So where well, I'm going to use a summon that we try to avoid at all costs, at all costs. So here's the double speed to make sure we we're doing pretty nicely here. Half damage from the granite, which is very nice. Fever to allow Kirin to go up. So we have fe we have fever back for turn three when I'm going to end the fight. Um, uh, right, so we're going to go, now that we've done that, uh, ooh, we're going to go Nereid, Cybele, Flarewall, and Procne. So Procne, very fast. Nereid, kind of fast. It, it, it gets, there, there's a, a, a bit more of that, but it goes. Now we have Cybele. Um, oh, also, I, I, Isaac is slower than the monkey. That's not good. So you can't skip this. You can try to, but... Jeez, dude. Okay, cool. Um, uh, we're going to go Prism. We're going to go Fever, Defend, and Plasma. Is that a speed tie? I think I think Isaac might be a, low, a lower, lower level because of that experience. Okay, he outturned. And we got an another rainbow kill, so our experience is looking good. But maybe I missed it. Can you uh, re-explain rainbow kills? Do we just have a chance on getting bonus experience? Yeah, yeah. So if you kill an enemy with the element they're weak against, uh, if you use a Ginny attack for, for, of the element they're weak against and they die, they will they will have a chance to flash rainbow and the, you'll get a bonus experience and uh, money. Is the is that amount substantial considering how for, how much further we are into the game now? Does that almost compensate? For it, 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 it makes up for the fact that we are going to skip a bunch of fights. Yeah, yeah. Does it compensate for the issue we had earlier? N I mean, well, I mean, the, this is built into the run, so <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to deal with that that elsewhere. Got it. I'm a legend. Oh, goodness. Uh, that's a sub-pixel perfect trick, so there, there's a setup for it, but yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, this is a menu that I should have done earlier, but I'm a bit nervous about it. I don't really remember it all that well. So I want to have Fever and uh, Zephyr Breeze. Uh, you're meant to have Zephyr as well. Um, you're meant to have Fizz, Granite, and Quartz, and then your Sleet and Gust. 
I think that's right. I'll check that when I'm doing something else, but I think that's right. So uh, we're going into a bunch of tier two classes because we're going to do a bit, bit more running now because fighting sucks, so we want to run. But if we do fail, we might die. So there we go. Um, I also want to do... There we go. Set those two so I, um, Ivan is in a tier two class as well to get some stat bonuses. Um, and then we're going to go Neptune, defend, defend, proc me. Was that right? That menu. Forge Fever Gust, Fizz Breath. Uh, sorry, Fizz Breeze, Flint Sleet Zephyr. Uh, I, it was Fizz for Sleet. I think, I think I, everything else is right. Uh, right. Um, no, Corona's there, so Corona should be somewhere else. Uh, right, sure, that's fine. That's fine. I can, I can fix that. Sleep. Oh, yeah, Fizz Breeze. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Flint Sleet Zephyr. And then, there we go. That's better. Yep. Yeah, Fizz has to come over because Sleet's no longer on Isaac, yeah. Flint and Sleet. That's the thing. Flint and Sleet on uh, Garrett. <laughs> That's the way to remember it. Uh, so we're now going to go into a dungeon that I would normally make a lot faster. Uh, I said that I'm going to do a skip that saves 17 minutes, but I need to do one dungeon a bit slower. This is that dungeon. Normally I would do a retreat glitch and warp out to the end of the dungeon early, but because of the way the, the, uh, the skip of the boss I'm doing works, I need to have a very particular synergy, and in, in order to get that I need to do more of this dungeon, which does slow this down by about six minutes. I think Plexus says five, but I'm going to say six. If you don't know who Plexer is, Plexer is Team Liquid's very own Sir Dr. Mr. Plexer. Um, to give him half of his full title. Uh, he's the GOAT. It's the only, only, only way to put it. He's been running this game for about eight years or nine years now, maybe ten years. He's, he's the GOAT. There's no two ways about it. Plenty of wonderful people in the community and all wonderful, excellent runners. And some even have faster times than Plexer. But Plexer is the GOAT. It will always be the go. I'm going to set fever on Mia as well. So this is a a, a like this is a side fight, uh, Ramses, so I can avoid Cybele. Uh So fever into Tiamat, tier three fire, um, and then Ramses. That extra damage from fever allows Ramses to kind of cover the damage, um, so that we can kill with Tiamat, which is a big fire dragon. Rawr. It's level 10 on Isaac there, jeez. <laughs> he's meant to hit level 11, not here, but he's meant to hit level 11 in the dungeon. Um, and then when Isaac is level 11, I'll have a faster fight on the water statues because you can skip Garrett's turn, basically, because Garrett's slow, and that means the enemy gets a turn. At level 11, Isaac outturns the water statue, which is nice. Uh, I need to. I'm gonna heal now because I just don't trust that kid. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna be doing here is giving myself a pocket Zephyr. So um, what does that mean? Now, normally when you play this game for the first time, most people would probably approach this thing by having mono element classes. So Isaac would have all of the Earth Ginny, and he'd go down the Squire, Knight, Gallant route. But you can create, you know, different and fun classes by mixing elements. Um, and these are what we call, you know, dual or triple element classes. Uh, as an example, if you give... Hello. Why him? Um, why him? Uh, if you give uh, Garrett an Earth class, it's an Earth Fire mix. And that's uh, the Brute class line, which is very good. Um, but what I've done is I've spread out three Jupiter Ginny across three characters. Because when you get a tick back of a rested Ginny, it's one Ginny per character. So if one person had all of, if one person had all of the uh, Jupiter Ginny, it would take three ticks to get Procne back. 
But because three people have one, one tick gets all of them back together. If that makes sense. Yeah, you, you, you trade out the stacking ability on one character to make them more powerful to to essentially accelerate your recharge rate. Basically, yeah. Nailed it. Um, it's kind of hard to explain that in a concise way without going too far over, over, over everyone's head, I guess. I don't know, that was pretty good. Oh, yeah. oh that worked. Uh, Couch got it. Uh, so it's, import it's important that I've got poisoned. I have not cured his poison um, because I need this poison. Um, and I'll kind of explain bits and pieces of it. Uh, but as you run around, and when you get a poison proc, your character kind of like jumps into the sky a little bit and goes, oh, been poisoned. Um, Are we going to use this to make a jump? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. Um, it's pretty impressive, I think. I like it. Uh, so Fever, uh, Ramsey's Tiamat, Procne. Um, so yeah, we're going to use it to make a little jump, um, but it has multiple properties, so we do want someone to be poisoned. Obviously, Ivan um, is the weakest character in the party, so he's the most susceptible to dying. Because he has poison, I will now make a safety save. If I lose poison after this dungeon, the run is basically dead. I can come back here and get it again, but it's a big time loss to go and do that, you know? Um, so I do want to make sure that he doesn't die. So I will make some safety saves. And again, in a marathon setting, um, if I do need to do one, I will do a soft reset only and not a, um, a, a hard reset. This will allow me to um, obviously only reset the general RNG and not the battle RNG, which th this means that I cannot manipulate what, e what actions enemies do. So with this jump of the poison, I take it, or big time save is we're going to go to a place that we wouldn't normally be able to get to at that point in time. Yes. Without someone being poisoned. Yes. Um, no, not in the way you think, but we are going to use that jump. It has like a secondary property. We, we use a jump in two ways, actually. We use a jump in this dungeon um, to, 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 to just to kind of like, um, like streamline one interaction. But then we use it another time, like after the next dungeon. Uh, we'll use it again to do something completely nuts. <laughs> um, and I'll kind of explain, I'll kind of preface this by saying that move allows you to move objects in front of you. That's how I'll say it. Yeah. I'll let you stew with that one. It's quite interesting. Um, now, so this is where I'm going to get a little bit of extra experience. I can just run from this stuff, but if I can get a one-hit kill with... Um, with Procne, I'll just take it and, you know, give myself a little bit of extra experience. Animation's so fast anyway. Hmm? Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's not that bad. Uh, uh, Frost Jewel. That's not right. Uh, uh, Frost. Frost. Okay, so normally, this is where the dungeon would end. I would do a retreat glitch if I was here, um, and I would warp to the end of the dungeon. Just like, you, you literally just leave it, you know? Um, let's go this guy. I think they have less HP. Um, so one thing, I, the, the one thing you might see is that um, there's damage values are different. I haven't really mentioned this, and I should have earlier, but there is splash damage in this game. The main target you choose will take the majority of the damage, and then the damage gets weaker as it goes wider so one of those so if, small you're, if you're looking to kill everything you're looking to hit something in the middle uh well if you know where the hp values lie yeah. you can either split damage and do like a focus here a focus there and average it out and do enough or you can like um what i did there is i attacked one enemy and then hit the rest because the other three would die i didn't do enough to kill the fourth one because i mis misjudged it but um if it was enough damage i would have done it yeah which is also why you might see me sometimes do things like this, where I'll do, like, Prism. Because I know that the skeleton on the left won't die to a regular Procne. So, or to a, a weakened Procne. So that is enough, dam is enough damage coverage. The spider would have died, but the, the skeleton wouldn't have. So yeah, the poison is quite quite frustrating to deal with. It does add a lot of like anxiety to the run because you're always worried about your poison poison character like dying, um, especially if you forget to set your Ginny.
It is very good that these menus are as responsive as they are. Because you have to go into them so often? Yeah, every <laughs> battle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, team at Cybele. The reason I am using the Time Lotosaurus is because um, because Isaac outturns the water statue, or hopefully does. Um, Garrett won't get a turn, so the enemy won't won't get a turn. There you go. Which technically is faster than a, a fourth action and the enemy action. So I'll take the Time Lotosaurus there. Yo. Hope everyone's having a good day as well. Um, I will try and make sure we can get Yisk onto the controller. It's just kind of this because this is such a highly highly technical thing. There are things I can I can coach him through and it's fine for. There are some things I can't coach him through and it's like <laughs> um yeah, there's there's a bit I want him to do. Like I'll I'll, I'll want him to probably do the big skip because it's not that hard. Quote unquote. It also be very funny to see Yisk see if this run 11 minutes. Right, that's three PP. I do need to do another um, retreat glitch here, so I'm gonna do one now. Uh, yeah, I've got enough. Um, so retreat glitch and run back. Retreat glitch again and run back. And now I'm in a room with a Ginny. I need to get this set. Um, let's do that, that as well. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, missed it. <sighs> Attacks first. <laughs> Damn it! If, I, if I'd got that, I would have had an attacks first on Spritz. Uh, so this is a setup to get the poison proc at the right time to speak to the Ginny. Uh, Tiamat. Uh, proc need defend, defend. I'm going to defend with I. Oh, I'm going to defend with Ivan because again he's poisoned. So if he did, if there were, this this thing has a move called Frost Sphere as well, which is very very powerful, which could kill him. And so I'm just going to defend with Ivan because he's poisoned. If he wasn't poisoned, I'd be fine. It didn't die? Oh yeah, you're actually meant to do a second a follow-up up attack, and I didn't do that. We're good. I did forget the attack from Garrett, yeah, yeah. Whoopsie. It only kills if Ivan does the procne, because he has a stronger procne. But I forgot that he was defending. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, that's not enough. Attacks first. I like how I got attacks first on either side of the uh, Ginny fight. Uh, jumping. See, so yeah, did this this dungeon with like the poison and the extra running feels really bad. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it feels really bad. <laughs> After, because we used to just skip this. Now, I am going to save 17 minutes over the old route because of the, the skip that I'm going to be doing. But it, it, this does feel bad, doing this dungeon. Like, it's just not nice. Another attacks first. Can't we save this for the end game? Jeez, dude. Getting future attacks first, just in the wrong place. Uh, 12 PP. Okay, I'm fine as well. I've got, yeah, I've got enough. More than enough. Good. So this is fun. Uh, normally, if you have the if you have the force synergy, you need that to knock the uh, the log at the back. But if you don't have the force synergy, Garrett just hits it anyway because he's a he's an idiot, and b the game is cool because even if you miss the force synergy, it still lets you progress. Um, yeah. Or not this again. Do, 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 do. So we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a different uh, retreat glitch now. Um, so you've seen it when I kind of teleport around dungeons by kind of like making the game think I'm in, in a different room. So a a value attached to a door takes me to a different door, right? Well, 
Now I'm going to interact with a climbable surface with a with a with with, with the retreat glitch. Now not, I'll, I'll just show you. You climb up. Oh wow! I'm on a different screen, right? Just so you know what it looks like when I do that. Um. Five PP retreat. There's no more a loading screen because it doesn't know what I'm I'm grabbing onto. So I just complete the run, or the climb, and then we'll run a little bit out of bounds. That's the boss of the dungeon. We're gonna run behind him and open a chest and get the lift gem. And that's the item that we get for defeating the boss, but we remote accessed it from off screen. I take it that door behind the boss just opens. Uh, that isn't a door, there's a, there's a chest underneath the boss. Um, so we just activated it remotely. Didn't even have to reposition re myself as well. That was really good. So that is the lift gem and the lift gem Gives me access to the lift synergy, which does this. Yay. If you do miss something, though, you get one of the best emotes in the game. GS clap. Uh, bosh, bosh, bosh. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, you have to keep healing your poison proc to character as well. The game is going to slightly change now because procne has been at the top of my menu the entire time. And what's really key with this game is like understanding where you are in a cycle of or, or like in the logic of the menus as you go. So there's the end of the dungeon proper. Um, so we're done here. This will be a great time for you for Yisk to take over because I've got cutscenes now. <laughs> I would that would that count? That. Would that count? Like just making him take over during a during a a mashable cutscene? Is that genuine? Do you want me to go? Oh <laughs> no! Like I mean, people want him to do a hard bit, so I'll I'll make him do the uh, the the boss skip. It's pretty straightforward. I'll just tell him what to do. Um, do we have a ETA on when boss skip is? Uh, seven minutes? Eight? No, well, no, a bit more than that. Like ten, including this cutscene, I guess. Yes. Are you hearing this? I don't know if he is. Look, can we get a honk if I shall, I shall go message? update him and then... Hello, yes. I'm going to make you do a fun bit, but it's not yet. You've got like 10 minutes. All right. Okay. Whew. The skip is quite straightforward if you do the right thing. I'm literally going to tell him the directions to press. As long as he does that, he won't screw it up. Or shouldn't. I found it doesn't work sometimes. And and everyone's like, no, the setup definitely works. I'm just like, nah, bro, you're lying to me. Um, Blues are your troll. Also, your setup's the worst. <laughs> yeah, there are three setups for the uh, Kraken skip. So I sh should probably, like, I guess, preface it. The 17 minute skip in question is the Kraken skip. There's a segment of this game where you go to um, a place called Calais and you get a ticket to board a boat and you sail the boat across a lake, which Garrett thinks is the sea. And he's like, I've never seen the sea before, despite being at Mercury Lighthouse, which is next to the sea, because Garrett is an idiot. Um, so you cross a boat and you have to do like a whole variety of cool things, but it is a 17 minute segment all in. So skipping that segment is just a flat 17 minute time save. Um, it's pretty cool that we can do it. Uh, I should probably do a little bit of story here. Uh, this is this is Master Hummer and, and in La, in Lama Temple. Um, she seems to speak quite uh, like, I guess, fondly or knowingly of Ivan here, and uh, she's also a Jupiter adept and she teaches uh, Ivan the reveal synergy, and this synergy allows you to um, see 
invisible things. The special, like, caveat to this particular mechanic is that the way it works is it literally lays another map over the top. So there's kind of like two maps of every area, which is like a... Um, the real map and then the reveal map. And it just kind of just, wherever you are, it gives you a little segment and it just reveals by placing a new map on top. Now this is kind of important because you can interact with things and move around it fr freely, but it just kind of like overrides the map with a different one for a little bit, um, which is pretty cool in all honesty. Um, so there you go, you can do that kind of stuff. And then when you leave the area, it just gives you back the old map, right? But that is layering another map on top. And that's gonna matter for the next dungeon because we're gonna do Another retreat glitch, but the retreat glitch is going to utilize the reveal to kind of do some really weird things. Um, so remember, when you cast retreat, but you can't actually cast it because you haven't got enough PP, the game thinks you're in one location, you're not, so you stay where you are because you can't cast it, but it thinks you're in another location because you said yes. So the game goes, oh, you said yes to retreat. I'll put you back at, at the beginning of the dungeon in the game's memory. But because you can't cast it, you stay where you are. So, um, yeah, it does that. Ooh. That's a nice sound effect. Um, uh, we're going to go drench. Uh, proc me. Um, so I've set this up. Now that I've got Tiff, I've got, I got Spritz, which is my fourth Mercury Ginny, which gives me access to Boreas, which is a tier four water spell, which is really nice for this dungeon because it's a fire dungeon in general. Um, and because we're taking damage, I can easily drain Isaac's PP uh, very, very quickly. Um, or do we have one? Uh, we do have one. We have a donation from the Ikea boy commenting... Uh, a six dollar donation from the Ikea boy commenting, Berry to Berry. I love this game. Thank you very much. We do seem to have a lot of fans of this game in chat. For a first, for Thank a you first very much. experience of this game, it looks absolutely banging. Oh yeah, it's an absolute banging. Good pacing, I there's, think, in general. There's just parts of the design in this game that are missing in modern day games and are very rare even in games of this era. Yeah. The inter like the way that you can interact with the map certain parts of the sound design, like the integration of battle systems, they're all just very well executed. Everything just fits right. I G appreciate that, yeah, I, I agree. GBA just had it going on, like, really hard. Uh, but yes, thank you very much, the IKEA boy. And anybody else looking to donate, we are raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We're helping out kids that, of course, aren't in the best situations and their families. So anything that you've got lying around, spare, Every little bit helps. Remember that all proceeds from subs, bits, cheers, whatever you, whatever you have, any money you give towards us will be going towards the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So thank you all very much for your help. We really appreciate it. The slip and slide. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out of bounds. Um, so what happened there was I um, used Reveal first to lay a different map over the top. Then I did the Retreat Glitch. So when I interacted with a Oasis, it was an oasis from another screen. And so I just zoomed because I'm not meant to actually be there because it's not actually there. So you kind of keep going until you run out of the, um, until you're like outside of the uh, reveal area. You know what? Yeah, it's gonna say. So can you ever get up this high in normal gameplay? No. But, but no those way. encounters up here. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Um, so this is a different menu for me. Uh, where is it? Encan Sorry. Encounters are just based on you taking steps within a loaded map. Yep. Yeah. Start, uh, uh, using reveal. Um, no, that's Llama Temple. There it is. Uh, forge for uh, forge to Garrett. Uh, breeze to Ivan. Um, this is a new one I don't know. Quartz for Fizz. What's the fizz? Um, and then that's it. And then smog, zephyr, granite, uh, elven shirt to the little guy. Um, cool. And now I'm going to face up here in the corner. I'm going to press A and activate the boss fight because he can. Um, Boreas, smog, uh, zephyr, granite. So granite's going to go first. Um, Ivan will take damage, which is really scary. 
Boy, Swire certainly let himself go. <sighs> yeah. Zephyr's going to double our speed so we can outturn and things. Mad Blast. Oh, no, it was targeted on him. Uh, Boreas is a tier 4, which al allows us to do this fight in two turns. This tier 4 damage is huge. Um, so 619 is oh, wow. massive compared to anything else. I think it was doing like 190 with Procne. Yeah, I was going to say, it must be... Oh, it was Jesus. Uh, right. Um, We're doing it live, boys. I might be dead. Uh, I might be dead. That is... Um, is that a different kind of poison? <laughs> or do we still... Beat no, I'm dead. That is... I've never seen that again. Um, I don't know what I can. I th yeah, I I can't. I haven't got any healing, um, and that was awful targeting. Um, because he's been inflicted. If I had the old poison, he'd survive because it would hit him for twelve. But this is deadly poison, which is double damage. So I, I can't heal him because he's the fastest character in the, in the party. By a lot. Does defend affect the poison nope. damage? Nope. Can he heal himself? Nope. Uh, That's what I was trying to do. Heal himself. He can't do it. Oh. Any braces available? He won't have the poison then. Oh wow. Uh, well, <laughs> I I've seen him get hit by deadly poison, but he had 30 HP at at, at, at the end of it. I've not. I never seen him have 13. Yep. Is there anywhere we can go nearby to we are, We're going to need to do what we spoke about earlier, about just backtracking to get the poison again. Oh, no, yeah, we can go and get it. We can go and get it. It's quite, it's quite far, far away, but uh, I can get it. That's very important. Um, why did that not kill? I didn't kill. That was strange. We are at less than 50 damage off. Yeah, that's a weird one. Uh, I think what I wanted to do there is either... Uh, I mean, well... That wasn't lucky at all. Um, I was always going to kill him. It was just I've lost my... Uh, my poison, yeah. Um, okay. This is going to take a while, unfortunately. That sucks, dude. Do we need to backtrack all the way to where we got the original poison, or is there something even remotely yep, nearby? Yep, we need to go back to Mercury Lighthouse. Wow. Which is, which isn't that bad, in all honesty. Um... V doesn't need experience, he just needs poison. And I, I, I've lost my poison. But poison is really awkward that it's not anywhere in the game. <laughs> um, it's really hard to find. It's in two places, Mercury Lighthouse and Alton. Hello, Yorsk. Come join us. Yeah, that has not happened to me, me before. Again, I've had Ivan get double targeted, but I've never seen him go down to that low HP. He had 30 last time I did it. Or did that. So, Yolsk, do you remember about 10 minutes ago when we said you're going to need to be playing a segment in about 10 minutes? Yeah. Uh, boy died. I didn't. I didn't die. Not yeah, not I the did. entire party. My character who had poison, which I needed, died. Oh, yeah, the yeah, ca the character of Alliant for the skip died. Yeah, that's fair. So I'm I'm just going to use uh, avoid and just um, quickly run through somewhere to get some poison. It's going to take maybe like three minutes. That's still net positive. That's still eight bad. minutes. Eh. Nobody wants to lose three minutes, but everybody wants to gain eight. Look. I mean, will it gain eight if I'm the one doing it? It's honestly not not that hard. Or if you do exactly what I tell you, you will yeah? do the crack and skip. All right. Sick. Okay. I look forward to that. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the whole thing in advance. Yeah. And then I'll tell you it step by step <laughs> after. So you. So I'll give you the whole scope. And then when you come to do it, we'll do it bit we'll do it bit by bit. Alright, sick. Um but yeah, I, yeah, that is weird with the Manticore. I'm I'm getting some seriously nasty targeting recently. I did have Ivan die in a practice run of the same kind where like 
everyone just targeted him. This is why having Ivan with the poison is the worst, because he is the, like the squishiest. So. I honestly didn't think that Manticore would be the thing that like killed me there. Because like I've never had Manticore kill a character. Other char I mean, other fights or other situations, like running from stuff. Yeah. But um You'd somewhat preempted this though when like when it was Ivan that got poisoned, you were instantly disappointed about that. Yeah. Block of the run. And it did end up mattering. I imagine if someone else got hit by the Manticore there. You'd said that Ivan had previously left, so I imagine that the other characters would have left as well. Oh yeah, the, the, the others wouldn't be anywhere near dying because they have like 30 extra HP, so... Go for it. Uh, we have $25 from Fatsuka. Uh, 25 for the wishes to have Neviates hang out upside down. Well, well, well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going on an adventure to find Neviates. Uh, thank you very much, Fatsuka. I wish I, had a, I wish I had the lure cap, but I don't, so... Is that easily obtainable? No. I, I, you don't even have it yet in the story. I have to do more of the game to do that, but I can't get to where I need to get to without coming back here first. So since we've had to backtrack, is it optimal for us to farm getting the poison on Garrot? No, just whoever. I mean, like, whoever. The, the skip is the next thing we were doing. After Fair. Manticore, you do the skip. <laughs> oh, right. oh, it was right yeah, yeah, yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Avoids effects wear off. I'm disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. That was really annoying. I wanted this run to go well, but like all the things that I kind of like practiced for and prepared for went wrong. Still, <laughs> for, the amount, for the amount of people, including myself, that have never seen this run before, it's a good showcase of here's why stuff is so important and can here's I, how we get around that. Can I get an encounter, please, game? Ugh. I'd love an encounter. This is where I find out you can't get any encounters anymore or something. Is the void still on? No, it, no, it, it ran out. But I've definitely done this before. Hey! Uh, I've, I don't think it's these guys, actually. I think it's the, um, it's the Cuttles, the little um, blue Cuttles who have poison. I think they're called Cuttles, but, um... Uh, Fatska is summoning request that's been placed for Nev. He will hopefully be arriving shortly, at which point he'll be upside down. Uh, thank you very much for the $25 donation. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. <sighs> okay. Taking more than three minutes. <laughs> I wanted to just come in, get an encounter and go. There we go. I should have uh, sta stood stood by all of my Ginny because I think my resistances are uh, affecting how easy it is for me to get poisoned. There we go. No. There we go. Hey! hey. We're bouncing. No points for guessing what you're doing next, right? We're gonna go and do the quick and skip. You ready? So what I'm gonna tell, what I'm gonna tell you is the general order that we're gonna do it, right? Um, when you do these inputs, I need you to do these inputs until you cannot go any further, right? So keep going in in a direction until the game stops you, right? Um, at the end of it, so you're gonna do a bunch of movement and then you're gonna do some jumps. You're gonna jump seven times: left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Yeah. On that final jump, on your seventh jump, you need to hold left. Okay? So run in the directions I tell you until you stop. And then on your seventh jump, you hold the left direction. 
Okay? So now what I'm going to tell everyone is that when you cast the move ability, that, that, that is reveal. Um, when you cast move, which is this one here, you basically put, go forward in, in a cone, you go forward and you grab an item and then you can move it, right? Oh, yes. Why don't I give you plenty of space? Uh, hello, Nave. Hello, Nave. Can you get seated comfortably really quickly? Do the hand. There we go. Thank you for your run yesterday, by the way, Nave. It's a very nice run. This is... We officially have an upside down gentleman. Uh, 228.40, so we're looking for 233.40. Nev. Wait, five minutes? Five minutes? Oh boy. The people pay good money for this, Nev. I ho ho hope you're enjoying the run upside down. So the kids? Uh, yeah, it looks the same as if it would look uh, non-upside down because I've never played the game. To be fair, if the good people at home pay more money, it could be more than five minutes. That is real. Keep him coming, quick <laughs> shot. And yeah, now I'm mic'd up. Uh, thanks, boy. Uh, the run was uh, a little bit delayed yesterday, but... Uh... <laughs> a little bit. Eh? A little bit. <laughs> uh, did you see the memory minute? Yeah, you did do that. That was cool. You had it blindfolded afterwards. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. really impressive, Nev. It well was done. fantastic. <laughs> okay. Now that everything's gone tits up, we are now almost <laughs> back to normality. Thankfully, the avoid spell allows me to run a long way without getting encounters. Um, so yeah, remember, I'm going to give you directions. You're going to um, you're going to go that in those directions until you you can't move anymore. When you do this, please hold down the B button because that will make you run as well. Um, that is important because this is a sub pixel trick and all that kind of rubbish and bloody blah. blah. <laughs> we all love sub pixel perfect tricks. Oh yeah, so just a question. Uh, if I mess this up, like, are we are we screwed? No, no, no. It's fine. Okay, okay good. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy. Uh, we're gonna use Rob Boris. I'm gonna. I need to go and get one more Ginny, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I did forget Vine because I couldn't fight Vine without. <laughs> I because Ivan died. One of one of my Jupiter Ginny couldn't recover. So I have to go and do that now, and that's fine. I had to do that earlier in Mercury Lighthouse. Bro, you got that donation like super early on, right? Yeah, yeah I did. Uh, I did. I think the biggest issue is just like sliding down. I think you need to like hook your heels in. I think I need to get rid of the pillow. Oh, up. Oh. Okay, that's, okay, that's enough. Good. I wasn't sure if it was, but it is. Okay, so there's actually. There we go. Uh, Thor, defend, attack. Event. Is that enough damage from Garrett? Should be. I probably wanted to use a spell to be honest and not Garrett. Yeah, it's not enough. That's fine. <laughs> Brilliant game. Um yeah, I was an idiot. Uh Why, Vine? That was like seven damage off or something. It was so minor. Okay. Thor, defend. <laughs> Heat wave. There we go. That's better. Ugh. To be fair, Vine fleeing is not that bad. There are there are um, quartz that I did in um, Mogul Forest. If he, he runs, you lose a minute. Because, you know, this is a good game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that should do it. There we go. Cool. That's Vine. Vine halves the speed of all of your opponents, which is in places better than you doubling yours, because if the enemy has a higher speed than you have, what you have, halving theirs is probably greater than doubling yours. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, yep, yeah, there we go. And then heal. 
Okay, now I'm gonna make my way to the Kraken Skip. Uh, hold down the direction until you can't move anymore. Um, and then at the end, you're gonna jump seven times on the seventh jump, hold left, okay? Yeah, sure. Alternating left, right, each jump. Yeah, left, right, left, left right, right, left, right, hold left. Hold left, yeah, there we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, if you'd like to enter the cave for me. Uh, well, I'm gonna heal quickly. Uh, yeah. Let me just heal quickly. There we go. Okay, enter the cave. Hold down B. Does he? B. Start at all. Dude, B. Oh, the, bottom hey, the bottom button. The bottom button. 20, uh, 233, 40, Hold down B. 10 seconds on nav. One, one second. Uh, hold up. Uh, now hold up left. Now hold down. Now hold up. Right. Up. Hold up left. And now jump. One. And back. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Hold left. Ooh, okay, it was close, but not but not perfect. You're going to have to leave again and do it again. Um, it's fine, but basically, if you keep doing that, you'll get right. Uh, also, can you heal for me? Or oh, I can. Uh, a, or, uh, sorry, press A, the right one. Uh, assign a G. That her, no, go to her. The, that ply. No, 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 no. <laughs> ply. That's very bad. And then, yeah, him. There we go. And now just leave the menu, yeah. Okay, so. Up. Up left. Down. Up. Right. No, no, no. Oh, oh you did fuck it. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Uh, no swearing. Um, okay. Up. Up left. Down. Up. The right. Up. Up left. And now jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. I think there's like one little footstep taken right before the left jump that's messing with it. You can kind of, when you go up left, you can get into that that that, that jump pretty nicely. He, he, oh, he, rem he remembers the directions. Oh. He may have missed one step, but it's okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay, Ooh. now you're in. Now press A. Oh, actually, no, no. Pre press B now, sorry. Press R, R1. And now press right. Because you clipped into the uh, into into the pillar, congratulations! You just skipped, skipped an Woo! entire boss in 17 minutes. Uh, well done. I always knew Yisk was. There you go. Here. So oh. by clipping into the pillar, it allows us to get inside, and somehow move just connects onto it. Um, and uh, yeah, you just saved me 17 minutes. I would like to know that Yisk also just did that on that turn without the instruction. But yeah, I, I was making you worse. Yes, because actually learned the trick. <laughs> yes, is very good at running glitchy games. Uh, he said, am I? And my joke is cyberpunk. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If it helps, I, when I first learned that, it took me a few times because like my setup, my setups weren't right. Because if you do anything like slightly off, the sub pixels change, and you can't. You basically need need, need to be on the right sub pixel for the jump to put you like over the barrier to get in. Yeah, it's really bizarre. I had to learn how to play the game as well. There is that. It takes a good teacher, though. Like, how quick was that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was perfect teaching, yeah? The instructions were clear enough that they could be remembered and still executed. Oh, yeah. My memory is, like, it, He's actually terrible. being taught it. Yeah. The thing is, y Yisk knows how I work. He understands my language and my, <laughs> you know, my patter. So, he yeah. and I, we just have that kind of connection, you know? Exactly, yeah. Well, well, wait, for well, the rest of the game. <laughs> Waiting on the ESC submission for ESA uh, Summer 2024 Golden Sun. Yeah, for sure. Golden Sun Race? Let's go. <laughs> no. Oh, whoops. 2P1C? So this move growth is actually only available if you mix the um, the elements and it allows you to get to some really cool places. Like You can't get there unless you give a fire to Isaac or an earth to Garrett and it allows you to find some secrets. 
the early one is the Elven Rapier, which I use as an example for the uh, Howl system in this game, which is very good. Um, but here it allows us to get a Ginny, because we because we didn't go into Calais and we skipped the Kraken, we're down one Fire Ginny, so we grab this guy instead. This is Ember. We currently have Forge, Fever, Corona, and Ember. Uh, Fizz, Spritz, Sleet, and Mist for Water. Granite, Quartz, Flint, and Vine for Earth. And Gust, Breeze, Zephyr, and Smog for Wind. Uh, cool. That looks good. I'll take it. It doesn't look perfect, but I'll take it. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we're done with we're done with boss fights for a while. In all honesty, um, uh, yeah, we're done we're done with boss fights. Now we have tier fours. So so this part of the fight, or this part of the of the game, is like end game, if you will, nearing end game, um, where every enemy can't really be killed by a tier three. So we have to use the tier fours, and they're mostly really impressive. Um, I'll let judgment rock once for like fifteen dollars. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard them. I should have done Meteor. It's much faster than Thor, who is very slow. For, for every 15, could we see another animation? Uh, that will start adding a lot of time to the run. And really? I'm, I'm already behind right now. It so will I start need to, adding uh, a lot of money to the total for the kids. <sighs> Are the animations that long? What can it take? They can, I mean, they can be. I mean, like, it makes like a five second thing into like 15 seconds. Ah. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, so I need to get level 13 on Isaac, who's already ready, actually. Uh, cool. I will get into the dungeon at least, but level 13 Isaac allows me to do strats that we call Captain Wayard. Um, we're going to give, because we have five elemental, uh, oh, Venus Ginny, excuse me, elemental, five Venus Ginny, we can get Isaac into his third class, Gallant, and it uh, gives him a load of, of HP. Right now he's got 144, but we're going we're gonna to get him to nearly 300 HP. By uh, by um, a by activating Captain Wayard, so uh, give uh, Spritz for Flint, Granite for Smog. So now we've got yeah 268. Um, the reason we do Captain Wayard strats is because we, we 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 want to flee because it's technically faster. Enemies in here do hurt, however. So there are situations where I'll be right. I need to set up a kill and nothing else because it can be good, it can be bad. Um, but yeah, Captain Wayard is the way to go. We used to do this at level 14, but we now do it at level 13. Which makes... In base class, that's not much difference. Um, but in Gallant, it's quite a big difference. I think it's like 13 HP. Which is a fair chunk in this game. It's the difference between dying from an extra hit or not. We made note earlier that you were now doing level 6 strats and level 7 strats at one point. Uh, how have you removed... Like a set amount of XP from the run. Does How? It to be fairly consistent. How do you say? Yeah. Or? What's 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 happened to the run to cause it to be? Um, it's more well? it's more about just optimizations. Like we used to just kind of at the beginning when we were in the Mercury Lighthouse thing, we just take a lot of fights because they were scary to run from. That was it. Like if if I was actually to do flea strats in Mercury Lighthouse, if I, if it went poorly, I would just die in two turns. If I, if I lose one character, all it takes is Ivan to get like double targeted and then it's over, and that kind of sucks. Um, and so you just lose a lot of runs in these strats if you're going to be fleeing from certain fights a lot more. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those things where we knew that we had enough speed on Ivan. By using the mint on Ivan to get enough speed, we only need Mia and Ivan to outspeed Saturos. And as long as we can do that, the strats are fine. Um, Isaac was a little like, like squishy because of it. And I got very unlucky on the starting action and then the subsequent um, targeting. It's unfortunate, really, but um, there are risks because of it. They're not that um, inflexible, but you can just get a little bit unlucky every now and then. Also, I hate running. Uh, running is awful. I know it is faster, quote unquote, because of, again, probability to just get, if you get a first time flea, because of how long animations can take with the summons. Uh, and not every fight is clearable in one action. That, I mean, that one is or can be. But some fights take two or three summons, well, two summons. Um, and so that just adds loads of time to every single encounter. So fleeing one encounter will probably save you, like, well, fleeing an encounter is like, I guess, well, so good that you, you know, you could like take two and it's fine kind of thing, you know? This is a scary fight because of that thing. Wow, 105 exactly? 
Oh no! <laughs> 105 exactly. Good God. I was um, talking about fleeing encounters being scary. That was we disgusting. Get, we get wombled. I'm going to make uh, Garrett Captain Wayard for a second, <laughs> just to make sure we get through. Uh. I hate this. I hate this that G Garrett gets to be Captain Wayard. But that happens sometimes, I guess. Jeez. Why is the game just finding ways? I was, I was feeling kind of good about this new route. I was like, yeah, I'm getting it down. It's fine. And this has just been a, a nightmare. <laughs> oh, this is my last Golden Sun one run. Going out with a bang. Uh, blue, green, white. So left, left to right is blue, green, white, yellow, red. And the game will show me a color. I touch it and... Um, I open up a secret door. So when I was running through this dungeon, there was a guy with like a white outline. Um, he was down here and was... He, he, he's, a, he's an old man. And if you remember what I said earlier in the game is that the older the character, the, um, like the more lines they have. We're about to enter Cutscene City, the most densely populated cutscene segment since the beginning of the, of the game. Um, so, yeah. If someone wants, wants to do some mashing for me. I'll take. <laughs> really? Of course. Oh, that's kind of good. Um, I could use a warm up for nine tomorrow. Ooh. Attacks first. Where are these in the in Venus Lighthouse, dude? Okay. You need to warm up mashing the left hand, not the right. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> just, yeah, just punch Garrett, dude. Let's go. Um, okay. Okay, this is an old man. Uh, his name is Barbie, um, or Babai, or Baby. Uh, B A B B I, which is Barbie, uh, obviously in um, Japanese, I guess. Um, so yeah, he is an old man who many years ago went to a place called Lemuria, which is hidden on the eastern sea of Wayard. When he was there, he somehow found it. Um, he was given a uh, a like draft, which I just picked up a bottle of like Lemurian water. And Lemurian water is magical water that basically keeps you alive for longer. Um, and Baba, so Baba is really old. We're talking like into the hundreds old. He's really old. Um, but he's been getting weaker and weaker, but he was running out of water, so he's been rationing it more and more. And he basically waited too long between sips. He didn't quite get there, so he's fallen over. And we find him and save him and give him the uh, give him the the, the Lemurian draft. Uh, what I'm going to do go and do though, um, I'm going to quickly speak to him again. And then if someone can just mash for me, if Star, if you want, if you want to mash for me, hold down B, then just mash whatever you want, L, R, and A. Let me speak to him first, and then I'll give it to you. Um, so I'm just, I'm just any of those three. One sec, one sec, one sec. Yep. There you go. Hold I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pop to the loo, one sec. This is a long This is good stuff right here. Mr. Streamer man, I can't see the the story. Can you slow down? Yes, but Barry will be mad. How much? Enough to brave Barry. <laughs> He's not here. I need to brave you. Go into the toilet and ask him. Uh, no, we'll be good. How are we doing on that releasing tackle incentive? 
Uh, last I checked, it was at like 30 out of 500. What? Where is it? I don't know if it's monetary or if it's channel points. It's channel points. Is it? I will happily throw Taco into the snow. Oh, is it busy? Wait. Oh my god. Repeat. Okay. Yes. Optimal. Twitch chat, we have runners in here. Where do I go? Boyes came in and told us that uh, if he's not back in time. He's told us to kill ourselves in the game. As soon as this cutscene ends. I I don't... <laughs> that sounds almost like gaslighting. But, we have runners in the chat. But, so I'm so ready for us to go see this village. Boy walked in and said, uh, kill yourself in Golden Sun. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> can we get that on microphone? Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, I, I can't do what I need to do. So uh, I will be back, but I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let, gonna let, gonna let, let, let Star die first. He's asking, asking us to appear in Colossus. So basically what happened is, um, Babai was like, or Barbie was like, oh my god, your powers are amazing, you're so cool. Do you want to come to my massive, like, ch champion tournament for warriors? Grown-ass warriors. You kids will be fine. So we're going to go in and, we're going to go and get involved in a, in, uh, in a tournament. Here we go, you're, you're done now. So, right, right, so run around. Just run around with, yeah, get an encounter. Oh, that is some sh movement. Yeah, I've never seen a run around. That's Danton. Quite, quite like it. I don't know if Dash Dancing would actually. Uh, just attack. If you hold B, it will skip, skip the text quickly. Or mash A. Don't use Delude. Attack us. Please kill me. Good. <laughs> they know. Oh, damage. Let's go. Hey! Oh, jeez. My word. There we go. I'm looking a lot yeah, good at this game. You went, you, you went and did it. Thanks so much indeed. Um, is Goosebud still outside? That's excellent. I yeah. hope not. The goose got released into the wild. The goose is flying south. Chat decided to release the goose, and he has been released. Chat, I will never forgive you. Production, can I get a phone in memory? The only Goose way back. we have, the only way we get Goose back is to make a worthy sacrifice, also known as Paco, to the snow gods. Just, I don't know why I haven't, uh, just, just, I just have a bad feeling, just so. About the goose? No, about this section. <laughs> no, you I have a it. bad feeling. No, no, let's check. Uh, there, the, this is a bit new as well, because normally you do this section at level 14. We're doing it at level 13 now, but it does make a minor difference. Uh, where are we? There it is. Granite and quartz. Do, 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 do. So uh, what's really cool about this, I was talking about attention to, to detail. Um, we have been added last minute as a final competitor in Colosso. Is there any of those rings on the floor that looks a little different to you? Yes. The crudely hand-drawn chalk circle on the, on, on the far right. Oh, the rest are all part of the, you know, the building. They're all like nicely mosaiced in. But someone's just gone, Ksh! you stand there, brother. Very quick. Don't stand on it yet, it's still wet. So, uh, Barbie kind of like um, lies to the cast and they're like, we, everyone thought they were all entering, but no, it's only Isaac. Do you need to mess with your gins? I do. Because yeah. they all went on. Get it? I've already put them back onto Isaac. Already. Ah, bang yeah, up. Yeah. Lovely. And you need, need to press no here because there's a long tutorial that, that this guy gives you. If you don't press no, he's like, I'm going to tell you how Colosso works. I don't want to hear your explanation, bro. Can you explain it to us? Yep. Uh, three rounds uh, where we have to have a, a bunch of obstacle courses. And uh, we can have our friends uh, cheer us on and essentially cheat. You, They can use their sign energy to make the obstacle courses easier for you if you want. 
But yeah, it's, it's actually faster to like not because winning is easy to do anyway, and we have to wait for the um, opponent to get to the final area anyway. So getting there faster doesn't make any difference. We can just get there however fast we do, and we, we and we win anyway. So, um, but yeah, the idea is that you would find out what each segment of the um, thing is. Uh, granite and ground was that was it is? Uh, SB granite and quartz. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go stand on my little crudely drawn circle. So uh, it, you're, you're probably asking, a seven-man bracket, how does that work? Uh, the number one seed gets a buy. It's pretty easy. Everyone always wonders about it. It doesn't work. Like You can just have one person get floated to round two. That's fine. Perhaps the previous winner of last year's Colosso. Very colorful knights. You do meet these guys, actually, in, uh, the, in the Lost Age if you do something special. Um, right, here we go. So you, you could... Cast Douse. You realize that those aren't knights and that you're secretly competing against the Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Three, two, uno. So the, the reason it's easy to win is that the enemies will always go for all the extra items. And you can ignore them for the most part. I'm going to ignore that one. You can see the guy run up to the north a little bit, and then this is fairly straightforward. Wait. I'm going to get this one, though, because it's an oil drop, which I'm going to use. It's definitely gra quartz granite, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Just in case, you never know. And we win. Okay. So now we have to wait for him, him to finish the race, so... Uh, how was dinner? Was it good? It, it was, was actually lovely. It was really good. Yeah? I believe there, you, there's you some were, in the hot box. You were with us when we uh, ate there on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, how was, was tonight? Great. It was, it was great. Lovely. You haven't gotten any yet? We're doing a speed run, my friend. Yeah, you just left. Gotta go fast. Uh, not to go and eat. <laughs> uh, uh, you could have. I believe there's still some in the hot box. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to have some afterwards. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, right, this fight is uh, open to judgment. I think no 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 not 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 that's that one uh, oil drop there we go what I didn't want me to press that oh no uh, oil drop I like it when you get an extra input by accident uh, that's perfect actually that works out uh, it's f uh, flint now actually uh, uh, it's not flint why does it say flint oh stand by those two I did it I did it the wrong way around uh, that's fine uh, yeah that is fine actually. Um, uh, cure well. That's a lot of damage, actually, for a regular hit. 83. That is not good. Uh, that's not going to kill. Oh, it will. Okay, I'm just genius. That's fine. Um, that was a bit scary, but it's fine. I was meant to start with, like, flint and then ground. I, I did the wrong menu there, so really weirdly. Because I was, I was meant to stand by uh, granite and quartz, not set them. I did it the wrong way around. So everything that was white was meant to be red and vice versa. I won, so it's fine. Okay. This one is uh, SB all set and stand by flint and then set a granite. This next fight is perhaps the hardest. I'd say that Sat Rage is, well, yeah. You only need to win two fights and then you lose the third one. You need to get to the finals. In order to impress Babai enough to continue, you've got to get to the finals. Um, so... As a, are you going to intentionally lose the last yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you can win it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna make it an incentive because at this level it's just ridiculously hard and I'd need to manip do battle manip. I don't know the battle manip. Um, but you, you can't do it normally, I don't think, really. It's a bit nuts. I mean, I guess you could grind it out slowly, but I don't fancy my chances. Um, set, yes, yeah, stand by all. Set, um, double tap flint, and then it's granite. Yeah, double tap flint, then granite. The reason I double tapped flint is so that he was like the last one set, 
so he comes back last, so I get my other Ginny back first. The ones that give me speed and the ones that give me more defense and HP, kind of thing. Because each Ginny gives you different stats, obviously. I say obviously, they, do, they, they give you different stats if you didn't already know. Uh, okay. Just to make sure if I make an error. These, if you if you lose in either of the first two fights, you have to like leave Colosso and do the entire like segment again of like, you know, being told what to do. Go and do your, um, you know, send your characters off to where they are and then do the whole race again. It's it's uh, it's brutal if you if you lose a run here or lose a fight here. Here we go, Sat Rage. Are the competitors on a pretty set timer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So they, it always takes them as long as it. This is why like helping yourself win doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to do Judgment to begin with. Smoke Bomb start. Lovely. Uh, Ragnarok. So after you use Judgment, I get like a hundred extra Earth power, which means all my attacks are stronger, uh, and all all of my like magic spells are stronger. So basically, I'm just going to use Ragnarok. Uh, oh, he healed. Okay, if he heals, you need to do two extra turns, which is not ideal. But yeah, that's how it goes. Like, a nut is worth 200 HP, and I deal roughly 100. So if he does do it, it's two. It's plus two turns to the fight, and that's just set. You can't do anything about it. Should be fine. Sweet, that's that one now. Now I can lose the. Ne I don't have to. I, I lose the race and lose the fight because the final item. You saw that I got like a shield in one of them and I got an armor in the other. Um, I'm going to get there, there's a there's a weapon on display for this one. So. The way that this actually works is that whether you win or lose the race, the there are basically two versions of the three guys you fight. So there's Azart, Satrage, and Navampa. And there's two versions of the fight. One with a bit more defense, one with less defense for the first two. And then there's a stronger Navampa and a weaker Navampa based on whether or not you get the, the big sword or the small sword. Um, so we want him to get the bigger weapon so he, he can two-shot us. And then that's it. Okay, but we're, 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 we're barreling towards the end of the game, which is going nice and fun. Lend a hand. I don't have frost, so I can't. Actually, no, he does. <laughs> oh, well. I'll try and do the infinite climb or the instant climb glitch here, because I've got plenty of time to muck around. I need to lose this fight anyway, uh, this race anyway, so... Um. I'll try and choke it. If you're really being like really cocky, you can do an, an instant climb, an instant drop, and another instant climb um, if you want to. But we want to we, we, we want to scale a wall basically, and so you, you, you either do it the really long way and you like climb to the right and climb to the left and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm going to try instant climb. Please. Ah, bum. So I've got to do it for like 12 frames one direction, and then the 13th frame is the other. Please. Hello? I'm just getting off. Stop it. This is really weird. It's like it's almost like it's faster. Oh, I know why. It's almost like I'm getting off faster. It's like Oh, he won. <laughs> I 
I, have, I, I you can normally do it, but like, I think it's because there's lag on the on the thing. Was, my menus earlier were terrible. I was adjusting, but like, yeah, it's really weird. I couldn't do it. Very bizarre. Because it needs to be, it is frame perfect. You've got to go 12 frames one direction and then one frame the other. But I think because it's like slightly off the timing, I can't get my t my like input down, if you know what I mean. So I, I kind of do it, it's not visually, but like, I kind of jump off much quicker than it. I think I am, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, well. I normally get it in like three or four, but... Oh well. Yeah, you normally get like three or four attempts before it's actually a time loss to to to, to try for it. Uh, yeah. So I'm forcibly summoning like things I can't summon to just end the fight quickly. If I attack him, he might heal on a turn, and if I defend, I take half damage. So the best thing to do is to have not enough summon power and then just crack on. He didn't die, though. He just fell asleep. Tired boy. Okay, I think everything else from now on is pretty the same as what I knew. So from here on out, the run is pretty free. <laughs> I say free. The end of the game is really scary. If I get back attacked once, the run's... Well, the, if you're on, like, a PB run, right? If you get back attacked, it's over. Because enemies will just one-shot you. As long as you... If you have revive items, you might be okay, but... There's a particular encounter that has like four dynamite item, um, di dynamite enemies, and if they, if you get back attacked by that, they will all explode and just wipe wipe the party instantly. Just not helpful. Are you okay? Are you in sound mind now? Yeah, everything looks fine. Okay. Okay, now we get one last big cutscene. Um, because again, Babai is really old and wants to talk for ages. So this is, I think this is the second longest cutscene in the game, this one. Um, it's fairly long. Or is the first Babai cutscene the second longest? Uh, Star, do you mind doing some more mashing whilst I ha finally have a chance to. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, cheers, buddy. Anything specific? Hold B, press buttons. Hold B, press buttons. Uh, I guess if I'm not back in time, which I probably will be, uh, the guy with the black hair on the left will walk away when the cutscene's close to being over. And then I stand still and wait for you. And then I stand still and wait for you. Yeah, on you go. Would that just mess? Uh, so, uh, boy saying someone's undead again. Yeah, someone is still in the bathroom. <laughs> are they... Are they dead? I think it's oh. someone else. Yes. I hope so. This we is had, a separate we had the door visa. I flagged him that it was open. <laughs> Alright, I think we're good. <laughs> the runner man just wants to go pee and he can't. We'll have to go outside at this rate. Not where Goose Bear is. <laughs> no, no, not with the Goose. Don't pee on the Goose. Christ almighty. I miss It feels wrong in here without the Goose. I miss him, man. When I is, don't. Is he okay? He's outside. Is he actually outside? Did you, you watched him get booted outside. He's outside. He's gone. People may watch me boot Tackle. <laughs> Donation incentive. Kick Tackle. There's a. I think there's still a channel points incentive to release tackle. Speaking of uh, donations, though, uh, people in Touch Chat were talking earlier about Scottish accents, Irish accents, what have you. Uh, it's definitely Scottish. Yes. Me and Mizu both have the ability to turn our accents on and off. So if you want to stick in a wee $20 donation, me and Mizu can stick on a proper Glaswegian Scottish accent anytime you want. I am totally down to sell out my accent for money. Me and Bizzle stick an accent on for charity. Anybody wants to <laughs> own, you guys know what you're saying. 
ten dollars for five minutes. Ten dollars. Uh, ten dollars for five minutes, do you think? Only ten. Dep dep only ten. That's yeah. why I said only ten. Fifteen make. I did. It depends on. Depends. So. <laughs> Like Depends 20? on how busy the five minutes is. Hey, 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 that's, that's chargeable now. No, 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 no. This is a sample. <laughs> this is what the people want. I'm giving them a wee heads up as to what they've got in, this, in store. A lot a lot of people don't realise that, like, when you do have really, like, powerful accents, you really tone them down. Yes, of course. Uh, on the uh, ESA stream, to make sure that our... Uh, European and global audience can understand us. We have been able to tone down our Scottish or Australian accents. Uh, but if people are looking for it, we can turn it back on anytime you just want. You guys know what to do for money, specifically. <laughs> was it? Was it you call it, boy? Cash money. Donate some <laughs> cash to make a wish of the families and the children. You guys can get what you want. Can you bring the goose back? <gasps> Bless. <gasps> My goose is alive. He's actually gone. Uh, Bowie's away to go get some milk, like from the store. How long has this gut seen? <laughs> Did you watch the first 40 minutes of the run? Wait, That's it's 40 minutes? <gasps> no, 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 no. <gasps> the goose is back! Uh, Goosebert is gone. Bowie? Don't you punch the goose? Bowie! <laughs> okay, bring the goose back. Alright, pal. Keep on doing that to a wee goose, but you'll be getting a Glasgow kiss. Look, we're already on for Okay, the I've box. increased the Glaswegian. That was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, goose is Glaswegian. How, how are you feeling? <gasps> oh, uh, he's going away now. There we go. All the better now that Goose is back. There we go. Do you want your friend over? <laughs> <laughs> I think that means we have different honks! <laughs> Come get your friend. Oh, okay, you're coming over here. That was probably more reasonable. You've sat in his leg. The question, do you want your friend over, wasn't answered by me. It was answered by Gusbert. So I'm <laughs> the one that needs to move. Those are the rules. And plonk. Uh, Gusbert's returned. Hello, friend. I'm so happy. Okay, so uh, granite to you for Ember. Uh, no, ground, sorry. Uh, granite to you for Smog. <laughs> Uh, quartz and vine for Put mist. your scarf on him. Why you put your scarf on him? Uh, you know, actually, I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> oh, sorry, Ryan, man, not you. Don't worry. We're just very happy to have our goose back. Nice. Nice. Attacks first is a bad time. Um, okay, so uh, we're now going to make our way to the south through the Gondoan Passage and crack on. Um... There are a variety of encounter skips you can get. I've already failed one of them. There's about seven, I think, between Tolby and the Gondoan Passage. Ah! There's one. That's a good encounter skip. Let's go, dude. Uh, where's Drowse? Uh, Douse, there it is. Let's put that there. Drowse? Douse. Um, so I just, earlier I got a, a Ginny called Ground. Ground is absolutely, like, big boy, like, grown-ass man level of, like, Ginny. He's huge. Um... He's a grown-ass man. Um, so what ground does is ground denies an enemy a turn. Some enemies have two turns, but ground denies one. So uh, ground, uh, judgment, defend, and Tiamat. So ground is a priority Ginny. It goes first. Um, so now the tornado, tornado Lizard will get hit by Tiamat. It'll try to outspeed out, out, out Isaac, and then it can't, and then I go. Um, so it's a very, very powerful... Um, Ginny. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh! Uh, Boris. Uh, I can do this one. I, I, basically, that was almost an encounter skip. I almost got to the next tornado lizard without getting the disencounter. So that's uh, nay, yay, yay, and nay so far. Um, was if, that if you're following along, Andre? Was that just unlucky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, no, no. You need to be lucky to get that skip, to be honest. Um, you need to get lucky to get it. So it's not about getting unlucky. You're more than likely not going to get that one. Um, but you can get it. 
I take it when we go into these forced encounters, the same logic applies if our like encounter aggro resetting. Yep. yep, yep. Even though they're forced. Because yep. we're going from the battle scene to a place. Yeah. So this one is hard to get as well. You basically never get this next one. Yeah. So you can go a large amount of steps without a random encounter because there's a forced encounter resetting you in the middle. Yeah, yeah. You can basically get through Ooh, this, this dungeon with two fights. No, 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 because it's here. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Oh, it carries me. Yeah, you need to get off, off that screen, then get to the next tornado. Yeah, yeah. Ah. It's a little bit further then than you think. So yeah, you can get through this dungeon, or you can go from Tolby to finishing this di di this desert with uh, only two encounters. Um, the next, after this one, you have to get one. You can, you just. I don't think it's a, it's literally possible to get. Um, yeah, the amount of steps until the next set yeah. is greater than the maximum yeah. amount of steps on the maximum aggro table. Basically, yeah. What did you call them earlier? I just called them rates, rate. like a rate of encounter. But like, yeah. it's not as simple as I made it earlier. I was just giving yeah. you a basic to kind of, kind of get the concept. There's like actually over 200 different different rates. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, that sounds wonderful. The table is huge, and the scholars of Golden Sun know it off by heart, obviously. But um. so something that's just dawned on me, boy. We're playing an RPG in English. So is there not any? Is a lot of games get played in English? Yeah, but it's strange to see like a, a game from this era not be like with this amount of text not be played in Japanese to like cut cut down. Yeah, there's enough text in this game that I've mashed a lot. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, that was a re that was a hard encounter. Um. Uh, Procne on there, please. Um. So the Japanese versions of these games do are good. Um. But you have no real advantage, to be honest. There aren't less text boxes? Uh, I'm not sure if it's like less. I, I, I don't know. I think it's just there's no difference, really. Yeah. I think I think there are some glitch differences, but like nothing that's like super amazing that can help us to such a degree, you know? Oh, so no, nothing like big, an extra crack and skip or anything? No, no, no. Oh, win. Okay. Oh, new friend. Just going to move that over here. <laughs> um. I'm going to put ground on on Garrett quickly. So this is Flash. Flash is the most disgusting of uh, all of them. Uh, I'm going to ground with you, and then you're going to proc me. So Mia has a boosted um, Boreas, and Ivan has a boosted proc me, which means that that's enough damage to kill. If you don't, if you have, if you keep ground on Mia, you have to follow up with extra damage to kill him. Um, but this is fine, or to down him, whatever you want to say. Fell. Um, so Flash is nuts. If you remember earlier in the game, I got Granite, and Granite halves the damage you take, so 50% dam um, damage reduction. Flash is 90% damage reduction. Ooh. And they stack. They don't stack, ah. but they... Um, but, I mean, for the turn, you take 10% damage. Yeah. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, uh, was Granite not lasting for three turns? No, ju just, just the turn you use it. Just the turn you use it? Yeah, yeah. Does Flash now just replace Granite, or can you use them like interchangeably? We use them in interchangeably, and in fact, that is a very important uh, specific uh, to make. And I'll show you why later on, but that is a very important uh, observation or question and to clarify. So yes, you can use them in interchangeably. He guarded the bastard. How dare he? That's kind of fine. I might need to open the menu here, but I don't really want to. I used Thor and Jobby. Okay. Uh, Thor and Tiamat. I'm just going to go for it. Uh, got it. Cool. So, yeah, that is a boss fight. You can outrun the tornado. Um, if you get caught by it, you go back to the beginning. Either, you either fight the boss fight, you go back to the beginning of the dungeon. Um, so, outrunning it is possible. Um, and I did get the encounter skip. So I skipped one, two, three encounters out of the seven I could have skipped. So that isn't bad. How's my MP looking? Way too high. I'm not going to be able to get the thingy. Uh, so the encounters from here on out now are really tricky. The table for clearing them is all over the place. You're pretty much going to need like a tier 4 and a, and a tier 3 or two tier 4 summons at any given time for, for, the, for these fights, or well, the majority of these fights from here on out. Um, but yeah. Ah. 
This song is a very Shining the Holy Ark. Uh, that is not bad, actually. Um, I think that is... Oh, actually, no. Uh, I don't know this one. I think that... I want to do uh, Tiamat there, and then... No, actually. That's not right. I think I wanted to ground the left. Yep. I didn't do that. Don't kill me. Although that's not bad. Because I can use that to like drain my PP again. That'll do. Is it worth it? 22? Uh, yeah, why not? Oh, dude. Um... Uh... And again, that's bad. I probably wanted to do ground on the golem and then, uh... Meteor the succubi. Or the nightmares, rather. That's fine. That's a bit, un a bit unfortunate. I think the targeting's a bit wrong there as well. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit, a bit unfortunate, but that's fine. One, two, three. It's <laughs> annoying. Sixteen, twelve, eight, four. They say exits the dungeon. I wouldn't say the absolute fastest, but um. uh, so I'm actually going to exit quickly to go to the right hand side, then go back in. It's so when I cast retreat, I go back to the right hand side because that's where I have to go. Uh, I'm going to be going into the Venus Lighthouse a bit early here, um, but there's a bit of a trick to the Venus Lighthouse um, uh, at this point, is that when you cast Reveal, you don't actually get any steps to your encounter rate. Because for some reason, they actually did this first in localization, this dungeon, or this like this part of the dungeon. And I, as I mentioned earlier, that the Reveal spell like puts a map over the top, and on this Reveal map, they didn't turn encounters on. When they were, I think when they were like doing early bug testing or early kind of like localization of this game, they just didn't do it here, and I guess forgot to turn it back on or something. I don't quite know the exact the exactitude of it, but there are no encounters when you're in reveal specifically, so that's why we cast it a ton. Uh, okay, blue or yellow? Oh, blue. Blue. Yellow. Yes, Kate, speedrunners. Yeah. It's blue! <laughs> what did that do? Uh, there are two paths of puzzle puzzles in the next in the in the, like, the next dungeon. I'm going to go to a place called Babai Lighthouse that connects to Venus. Uh, there are two pathways: blue path and yellow path. The yellow path is like five minutes longer. Oh, oh. <laughs> yo, that's just a run killer! Oh, come on, Why yo. Why did we get that? And that's just a 50-50 roller. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it it it, it swaps every other frame, um, or sorry, every frame it swaps between the two. Um, if you get yellow first, just checking it again swaps to the other one. So you get a 50-50 shot of getting blue or yellow, and you lose like 15 seconds by having to recheck with the statue and change the color. So, yeah. As, uh, uh, this entire couch can relate to losing a 50-50 and having to reset for it. Absolutely. <laughs> Have you ever e ever lost a 50-50 and had to reset for it? Probably. Probably. Uh, Yisk is so cool, he doesn't care. Um, <laughs> he in, doesn't remember. In practice last week, uh, I lost nine coin flips in a row. A what, sorry? I watched uh, him do it. Yeah, I lost nine coin flips in a row. Oh, nice. One in five, twelve. Go. I love losing coin flips. Yes. It is possible to lose all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just indefinitely. Yep, 
it's like, yeah, but the thing is, if you do get, as I mentioned earlier, if you do get the the yellow path, you can just check it again to swap it, but it's just that first one is uh, a little bit <laughs> nuts. Yeah, we, we are we are somewhat the same. We have, we have a coin flip that um, if you lose it, it's five minute time loss, but you can just flip the coin again for a 30 second reset. Mm. Uh, I'm going to quickly uh, move four. Good. Okay, I'm going to do a very small, um, very minor retreat glitch, which does save a bit of time. Uh, uh, four. Yay. Hey. It just it just zoomed me up one screen. I just like skipped one screen's worth of movement, um, which basically gives me a chance to not get... Dodging painters. Well, you get that encounter, but you get a chance to skip the second encounter. But that was way too early, so I'm definitely getting the second encounter. Excellent rate once again. Thor is annoying when you have to use it because it's a, it's the slowest. I think I don't know the exact frame count, but Thor is about two times slower than um, Judgment. And then Boreas and Meteor are roughly the similar a similar length animation, and they're both like they're in between Judgment and and Thor. Thor is uh, the slowest, Judgment the fastest, and I think Boreas is like slightly slower than Meteor, um, but they're like they're basically the same. I think it's like negligible the difference between them. Do you ever go back for that gen that we just kind of fell past? No, no, screw, screw it. <laughs> we've got we're, we're as powerful as we need need to be. We've got tier fours on everyone, and we've got an extra earth in ground to stop a turn. We've got an extra fire in flash to for the extra da um, damage mitigation. So we basically we have all we need. All we need is is tier four summons. <laughs> um, but with the the reason it's actually interesting that we get five earth as well is like the the final boss strats are what we called courthouse strats. Because we rain judgment down on the opponent. Oh, for God. Um, <laughs> and the way it works is really cool. You were talking about interchangeably using two um, two defense mi or the, the damage mitigators. Yeah. And we're going to have basically an on turn and an off turn. One where we're like preparing for judgment and one where we're just right resting and healing kind of thing. Um, so it, it, it works out really nicely. Um, this is due to the fact that um, when we... Um, when One second... When I, if you remember, I was saying that when you um, summon a summon like summon a monster and you have your Ginny in resting, they take one action to like come back off of rest. So when you are running around in the world map and you get a tick, sure they will come back. But in battle, the turn you use it, they go into rest, and the following turn they'll come back. At, at the end of the following turn, they'll come back. So what we do is we summon, then they're all resting, then we do another turn, and then they come back. Then we can do it again, and then on the off turn they come back. We can do it again. So basically, we just go, we do one line of strats, and we do another line of strats, and come back, come back up to the top, and basically cycle them en endlessly. Okay. But it, it just works out perfectly with the way that we um, set our gin on our characters to get speed precision. We have the right speed so that certain characters go in a very particular order. Um, because I mentioned earlier that certain Ginny are priority Jin. They'll go first. Like the ground one? Yeah, ground is priority. Granite and Flash are all priority. Wonderful. Um, but others aren't. So we have to be mindful of turn order with the other um, with the other ones, basically. Do you do you intentionally put those priority ones on the slowest character to get maximum benefit then? Uh, technically, yes, but also no. Sometimes. It's hard to explain. Um, so sometimes it just Garrett is terrible and it makes him good, but we do <laughs> give um we do give Ivan one of the priorities. He goes first anyway, but he does a bunch of priority stuff as well. But we need it on Garrett because he's obviously a trash panda. It's really annoying because like in in Golden Sun: The Lost Age, right? You have four more characters. I mean, Felix and Isaac are basically interchangeable. They're both legends. Um, uh, and then Ivan and Sheba are basically interchangeable. Ivan's a little bit tankier than Sheba, but they do the same thing. But then the tank in the Lost Ages is water, and um, and also a healer. So the, um, yeah, uh, Piers is a tank and a healer. And then Jenna is a fire mage, so she's magic damage. She's fire, so she has high physical attack. 
She also uses light swords so she can equip really powerful weapons. And she has AoE heal. She's just insanely good. Like, versus Garrett. Couldn't he couldn't Garrett have got caught by Saturus and Minardi and like Jenna come with us? Like. I don't know. Screw Garrett. Sucks. Uh, so yeah, these are really easy puzzles, as you can see, and they're, I'm not sure if it is five minutes, but it's like, it is a good few minutes slower to do Yellow Path, but... I enjoy a good Tales game, so watching, like, all of these actual dungeon puzzles... <sighs> oh, dear. Excellent start! Wonderful! Thanks, game! <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, and he's my Flash user! Ah! Um... Ah! Ah! Uh. Are you good? No! <laughs> no, I'm not! Um... <laughs> What's the chance you... This is the best I've got. This is the best I've got here. Um, Can we res? No. Uh, Meteor Boreas. We're doing it live, boys. So when I said that back attacks can end a run... There you go. Uh, save after this when we win. The thing is, I got that encounter fairly quickly, so I don't have um, Thor. I would have killed the middle Orc Lord if I had that. Um, this will kill the middle Orc Lord because Isaac is fast enough because he's somehow in um, that thing. Oh, good. Whoa, oh, good. Yeah, there we go. Save. That is really early. Dude, what is that? Save, 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 save. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Can you save my dungeon? That is really early. Oh, you can I've, save anywhere. Yeah. I've never seen it that... That I, early. I pulled it up my dungeon earlier accidentally. Did you? Okay. God, I don't know the controls for this game. E is to mash. <laughs> e is to mash. Wonderful. E is to make text go fast. If, if any runner has seen that, uh, that, that encounter that early, please tell me, because that is filthy. Like, you normally get it on the next screen. <laughs> I, 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 like, the earliest. That is... Crazy early. That that that's why I wasn't ready for that. Like I didn't have any of my gin ready because I didn't have they did they they didn't come back. <laughs> like oh, it was nuts. There we go. I shouldn't get another one. If I do, then this run was just destined to die from the beginning, like So I what if you get another one? Uh, I cry. I mean, yeah. to be fair, it could be worse. I could have got that encounter in Venus Lighthouse. Like, that was a nasty encounter. The Griffins are bad, but, like, um, there is nastier stuff in Venus. Um, specifically, the Grand Golem and Four Dynamite Beast encounter. If that back attacks you, there are four chances for them to use Explode. That one-shots anyone, and it will one-shot the target and anyone next to them. So there's zero chance of survival if you get back attacked by that. Nice. I don't think I've ever seen the the boulder beasts not kill you completely. It is ridiculous. So this is a nice little nod to the whole thing that Mount Aleph stands in the middle of all four lighthouses. Um, a, lo a, lo a lot of people get very pressed at the fact that the Jupiter and Earth are swapped around because Jupiter is in bottom bottom right and Earth is on or wind is bottom right and Earth is bottom left when it's actually swapped around on the world map, but. I just noticed that all of the statues were in the complete opposite corner. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, yeah. is this set up to be intentionally as slow as possible? Oh, yeah, of course. Wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you, developers. Thank you. Okay, uh, Cat Jam, Rat Jam, rat jam. Uh, Midori Jam, I don't, I don't know, whatever you want. Goose Jam? Goose Jam. Bert Jam? Uh, retreats. And we're going to skip the entire first puzzle by warping to the right side of that particular uh, thingy. Bloody Nora, can we not? Um, you know what, I'm going to do this. Defend, defend. Flash, and then Thor. Are we going to talk about the fact that even with 90% DR, we're still defending? Or are we just doing that because it's the fastest that can be? Woo! Uh, that was... Uh, mm, they are out-turning Ivan. Double Griffin is horrible for that reason. Uh, I need to use ground as well. Um, so defend, defend, and then Tiamat. Can I double check that, that we are pressing defend just because it's the fastest action that they can take? 
Uh, fastest. I, I also hit half damage. So yeah, it's just they would kill me if I don't die, if, if I don't guard. I was right. just thinking because we already had 90% DR from Flash. Oh right. Oh yeah, because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I was purposefully. You can you can kill. I purposefully like delayed it to a second turn because I get a Jin tick back. So if you have to use multiple summons by extending the turn, you can basically um, get your summons back quicker. Because if you get an encounter really early and you don't have your summons back, you're kind of stuck if you get the wrong... Um... Yes. No, I'm not. The wrong encounter. If we haven't heard the little dink yet. No, I know. It's just like, uh, Blues is, is... He's chatting incorrect stuff. He's like, I, he said that I didn't have Elven shirt on Ivan, and I have the entire time. <laughs> he's just My guy thinking I don't know the strats. What a friend! No, that's all right. It's fair to check. Um, I, I, I even has been weirdly outturned in places, but um, yeah, he definitely has it on. He definitely has it. On. Yeah, Griffin said uh, pretty nasty. I don't see a fourth pillar here. No, because it's, it's just a create, create, you know, complete the track. Oh, all I needed one power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened there if we put the the top right pillar on the bottom right? Because it would have been. Uncompletable. Just doesn't, reset the room. Doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, you just reset. Just go back out and come back in. I love when I walk out of rooms and pillows just magically move against gravity. This is a generational thing. This was all of our puzzles. Yes. Just reset the room, baby. Just in case, because I don't trust this video game. I actually shouldn't. I shouldn't trust any video game. There's a treasure chest behind the other one. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. Wonderful. This is a, not a, a, fun thing. a fun little caveat to the, the those screens actually um, is that um, you don't get encounter rate time steps when you're on the grates with the sands going through. So if you do, if you're on that screen and you are like knee need to get recharges um, of summons, you, you can do it on those screens. I'm gonna do this for the fans. It's time for GS clap. We love a bit of GS clap. Yes, clap. There's not a massively long dungeon this one really, compared to like the <laughs> compared to the uh, second games. Okay, we're all good for. Uh, oh, that's lovely actually. Um, we're gonna go. Uh, I'm actually gonna do this. Ah, uh, no, actually, yeah, ground. That's fine. Uh, let's do judgment. I'm gonna make, make this two turns just for uh, safety's sake. Ground will, will, will remove his turn. Ivan outturns uh, Thunder Lizards anyway. Uh, but um, uh, and then we're just gonna use TMI. I think. So I think Procne should be enough, regardless because of uh, how much damage comes out. But I'm just going with absolute certainty here. How about we bloody don't, dude? Uh, actually, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make, make this one turn because I can actually. Uh, Tiamat, Flash, and Thor. That'll do. Uh, this is risky to make two turns. I shouldn't have done two turns on this one, but like there are fights where it is safe to do uh, two turns. Ooh. Oh, hello. Yo. I heard it that time. Yeah. Coinage. Yeah. All right. Do you want to? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, see, I mean, it's not a lot to read. We have a, an anonymous, the $30 donation with no message. Oh, oh bless them. But thank you very thank much, you. anonymous. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. That's greatly appreciated. What do I They're press now? I, I don't know. The yellow uh, button. Press, press the yellow one. Yeah. Yellow press button. the yellow one. Oh. Uh, may need to press that again. I don't know if it just... No, no, no. Uh, right it takes a few seconds. Yeah. Basically. Right. Okay. We're almost done with the, with the game and the, and the dungeon, don't worry. Boy, do you think that for an anonymous 30, we could at least cash it in for a blah, 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 whatever it was yesterday? -do -do -do. A yeah, yeah, why not? Three. -do 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 -do. Or blah, 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 blah. It's up to you. Whatever <laughs> one you want. <laughs> Fly, Weasel Martin. Thank you, production. I'm going to have to learn that now. 
thirty dollars, do I need to go upside down for five minutes? That is up to you. I mean, do you want to? Like, nothing is stopping. You. It's a very strange question to ask someone if they want to be upside down. For I five mean, minutes. you were the one who brought it up. <laughs> Chat, if you would like I to mean... see Starator upside down, it will. Um... Twenty-five dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, if somebody pays twenty-five dollars and says Star go upside down, I'll do it. But also, like, the they, they kind-hearted soul has anonymously given thirty dollars and gave us. <laughs> I do this. I didn't. Uh, small thing. Uh, we do this one last because it's closest to the bottom. So that's less time. The animation of moving the camera towards the statue. Oh yeah. I'm just going to do this as well because you never know how much it makes a difference until you're dead. Um, okay. Oh, I think my PB is going by just now. 338.42, I think. How much of the run is left? Uh, that little circle there is the uh, last bit before the uh, final boss. Oh. Uh, Groomed! Um, Tiamat. Uh, yeah. This guy has a mean attack, so I'm going to ground him and then, then do two turns like this. I don't know. I don't need to do it like that, but I am. Just because, I guess. Uh, YOLO. Let's have another boo doo doo just for the hell of it. It was, th it was 30, so let's make it two of them. Go on, production. Make my day. Let's see if uh, Gusbert can give us a bit. Huh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gusbert cannot. It's not within his vocabulary. I'm so happy that we have two uh, different honks now. Uh, oh, we have more than two. I'm pretty sure there's more than this two. This is very valuable information. <laughs> Some fights just suck like this one. Like you can, uh, you can kill three of them almost like um, pretty reliably, or like two of them almost reliably, and like the other ones are just like just close to being dead, but not dead, and it's just. Uh... But again, they deal like 120 damage if you let them attack, so you have to flash. And... Cool. That's a big rock. Bang! Oh. A 340 landing. Jesus. Um, well, this, this has been a, ro a roller coaster. Um, thank you for watching it so far. We've got two fights left to go. So it's a bail. I'm probably going to like do the timer at Fusion Dragon because I don't. At the end, you just like mash for seven minutes. I don't really think anyone needs to see me mashing. Uh, the v the lighthouse opens up afterwards, and then some people jump into water, and the teams get separated, and then Isaac and Co go out and get on a boat and sail into the Eastern Sea. That's the ending. So I'm going to hit the timer on Fusion Dragon. Um, oh, hello. Hello, friend. Oh, ding. ding. Was that from there? I, would th I think it's going to ask for another. Boo -da 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 -da. Oh, I'm not. I don't have anything. It says, is auto refresh on? Oh, I'm, I'm refreshing and auto refresh is on. And I'm, I don't have anything. So auto refresh was just put on. You just pressed it. No, I just refreshed the page. <laughs> that refreshes auto refresh. <laughs> I, like, anyway, I like how. Was that not the game? I don't know. No, that was, that, that was, definitely sounded like... That was a ding. A ding. Production. Yeah, just give the tablet a second. Yeah. The, 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 back, the back end... Unless system. it was just production pressing the coin town. Production is just trolling us. Do we... Wow. Maybe not. I don't even know if we have a coin town. I'll be honest. You, you didn't hear that? Production, play the coin sound. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we were just, like, hallucinating. I like oh, how production just aren't listening to me at all. Yeah. How? Why did you? Why did you set? Why did you like set up the wrong sound though? Production. <laughs> production thinks that we just heard something in game. Please tell me there's no encounters up here. Uh, yeah, there's no encounters up here. Um, Thank oh, you. I imagine the encounter is the the boss, the the gentleman to our left. <laughs> Uh, right, you're gonna have uh, quartz, and then you're gonna give ground to you. Vine goes to there. We're gonna have uh, all the fires apart from flash on you. Actually, give uh, Corona for gust. Um, 
Fizz for Zephyr. I'm going to send Smog over. I don't need to, but I'm going to. It just makes me comfortable. Uh, one, two. That's fine. Uh, that should be fine. Flash, ground, granite. Um, yeah, that's good. And then I have... I'm going to do another save just because... Cool, let's do this. Uh, right, so first off, we have to fight Saturus and Minardi. Um, Ground is going to take away a turn, and I'm going to generally try and take turns away from Minardi because she has a move called Death Scythe, or Death Scythe, um, which has a chance to one-shot one of your characters. Um, if, you, if you think that's scary, there's, a, there's a, an, an enemy in the second game with an AoE in, uh, uh, de and an AoE death proc. It's great. Um, Satoros hits very hard. He's a big boy. He's a grown man. He's a large lad. He's a huge human. Um, etc. etc. Um, he hits very hard. He will, if he uses Heat Flash anywhere near Ivan's direction, he'll fall over. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by. Um, summoning, well, I'm going to start on a judgment turn, so I'm going to use Ground and Granite. Ground to take away Minardi's turn and Granite to halve my damage. This will give me all four uh, Ginny, then I'm going to do something with Mia, I think Drench, and then summon Judgment with Isaac. Isaac is going to go last, Mia is in a tier 3 fire class because she has four fire Ginny. So she's going to be quite fast, she's going to outspeed Isaac. So it will go priority Ginny from Garrett and Ivan, Ground Granite. And then um, Mia will get her turn, and then Isaac will use Judgment. On the off turn, we're going to use Flash and instantly summon. So Flash gives us 90%, and then we use the Fire Summon to get that back, and it's on rotation. On that off, off turn, I'm also setting up the extra Ginny that is on Isaac's um, thing. Because I have five. Four, or, well, one on everyone, but two on Isaac. So then he's, like, prepping one on the off turn so when i'm back on a judgment turn i use three venus three venus and then judgment so here we go uh so drench there uh judgment onto minardi i'm gonna ground minardi and then granite so again the priority goes out first i ivan is faster so uh, he will do it first then ground on minardi to prevent um prevent death size if possible pyroclasm is damage <sighs> nice that's a lot of damage and that's like half of it. Like Isaac would have, would have died. So judgment again. When you do summons, you do get bonus power. And I also have the Earth Blade on. So I've got 71 bon bon bonus power here. Let's wish. I'm going to Vine to half their speed. Flash on all of us. And then Mars. So Flash goes first because it's a priority Ginny. 90% damage reduction. That means that after I've healed... Um, okay, that wasn't on Saturus. If that's on Saturus, <laughs> that's scary. Um, so yeah, after I've healed, I'm not going to take that much damage. Only, 90, only 10%. So... <laughs> 200 damage if I didn't do that. Like, <laughs> there's no chance to survive it. Um, but there you go. So that's that's how it's going to roughly look. In the first turn, I did use Drench, but now I have to use Quartz because I did preset it. But now I have to use it. So every now every turn now is going to be uh, I'm going to do that on you, ground on you, and granite on everyone. Um, th so some people put granite and flash on Garrett. I put ground on Ga on on Garrett so I can always make sure I'm getting that targeting perfect. So I can just mash away on Granite at the end. Because uh, I don't want to make the wrong choice on target with ground. So it's just a personal preference. Most people do Granite and Flash on, on Garrett. Potent Cure. Fantastic. Uh, that slows the fight down by two turns. <laughs> uh, actually, that's fine. Let's do that. Uh, Flint, uh, Flash, and uh, Mars. I'm going to try and put as much as I can into Minardi now to make up for that 300 healing that came from Potent Cure. Generally, this fight can happen can be over quite quickly in like five judgments, um, but we need to. Okay, so there are three moves that make it slower: wish, potent cure, resist, and uh, break. Um, so I talk about how I get a bonus uh, earth power by summoning. Break removes that because it is t technically classed as a buff. Um, so I, yeah. Um, now that I've had resist and potent cure. They're going to take less, not too much less damage, but less damage from um, the, my summons because of the resist. So I'm going to take a bit longer to do this fight now. Not too much longer, but a bit longer. Yeah. Should be like mid 700s. So. Zoink Scoob! Uh, big damage. Okay, so on the off turn again, I'm going to heal now. I was able to not do that last time, but um, Flash, Mars. 
I was able to get away with a drench from Mia because there wasn't much damage on that off turn because of Potent Cure, but um, I now have to use Wish because I'm going to be in trouble here. It's not near Automata, it's original near, like not even near Replicant, but oh wow, you've used three of the four bad moves. <laughs> Jesus, that doesn't really affect it, not really. It's not enough to matter, but they really are throwing out all the support abilities. I'm just break away from everything. Uh, uh, let's go. Judgment, ground, granite. Yeah, having Mia out turn because of, of the tier 3 fire is so lovely. She also gets Drench and Wish, which is so nice. Tier 3 uh, classes having AoE heal is really, really good. Bloody Nora. Actually, you might have a Vile. That might, 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 might be a bit better. Uh, Flint, Flash. I have to put so much more into Minardi because he healed her. Okay, she went down. Uh, I'm going to play this super safe, I think. Actually, no, I should be fine, right? Yeah, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, let's just do this. Let's just do it. I was thinking about may maybe doing a side bell and trying to get the next turn kill, but um, he's healed too. Well, he didn't heal himself, only Minardi. So this should kill Saturus as well. I did put a lot of extra damage into Minardi, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay, one more fight. So yeah, Saturus and Minardi, I think that track is better than the Saturus theme. Come at me, Saturus theme fans. It's a good track, but just there are better ones. The Saturus theme is carried by how awesome the Saturus fight is. That first fight on Mercury Lighthouse is awesome. And it's just, the whole atmosphere is excellent. And it just makes a good track even better. You know? Unfortunately, we don't have anyone to analyze that right now as Taco is banished to the Far Lands. It has bells in the Dark Dawn version, and we love when bells get into boss fights. If you like bells in boss fights, you want to listen to the SMT4 soundtrack, because damn! Uh, so there you actually saw, we stopped them, but then Minardi still threw the Venus Star into the lighthouse and lit it. And now that's two lighthouses out of the four lit. This is the final boss of this game. Um, so the game is broken up into, into two. No one really expected the game to end here, so it was a bit of a thing. But like, the game couldn't fit, the whole story couldn't fit on one cartridge. They had to make a second cartridge. Um, and they kind of put way too much on the other side, to be honest. But this is the perfect place to end this game. You couldn't really do more, I don't think. Uh, anyway, so uh, it, M M Saturus and Minardi are showing mercy here, and it shows a very interesting side to them. They are not awful, evil people. They are, like, smart and they're determined, but they are, have a level of kindness, but they're just ruthless in what they have to do. There's a whole thing about how they're not really baddies in the second game, but yeah. Okay, so I'm starting on the flash turn, which means I can heal, which is lovely. Um, wish Vine get him nice and slow really quickly, um, and then uh, Mars. So... You may have noticed that I preset loads of my gin. I have all of my mercury and all of my... That's really bad. Um, okay, that's bad RNG. Um, I have loads of my gin ready to go, but they're not, like, um, being used, if you know what I mean. Um, I, have, I have two summons ready. Um, I'm going to basically do what's called a Thorius turn. Thor and, Bo and, and, and Boreas. I, like, blow up the boss when I'm ready to do the, the final kill. Um, but I need to, like get lucky. The, one of the worst things in this fight has happened, um, and that is um, my guy, Fusion Dragon, decided it would be a really good idea to use uh, Dark Soul Gasp, um, or Haunting Breath, sorry, Dark Soul is in the second game. Um, haunting or Haunted Breath, and that gave me a, a, an evil spirit hovering over Isaac. That is a 25% chance to deal 25% of the damage you deal reflected back at you, and I deal a lot of damage. Okay, so I would just die if that if that procs on me, and so the run's not over, but you can 
you need to like you have to navigate. Bloody Nora, <laughs> he just almost died, dude. Does that damage then get mitigated? No, no. It's just a flat reflection. Uh, it's pretty filthy, yeah. yeah. The, mit the mitigation would happen if the boss mitigated the damage. The damage is calculated based on the damage. Yeah, yeah. Whatever goes out to him is reflect is twenty five percent is reflected back at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ivan's in trouble. Outer space on the on that turn is kind of scary because he doesn't heal enough, so he's in danger now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another uh, wish and I'm going to go for a Cybel on the second turn, which is not ideal. It's really slow and not much damage, um, but I need to make sure that Ivan doesn't die. Uh, so I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Cybel. I take it that this mob is immune to being grounded. No, no, I ground the first turn. He has two turns. Oh, so I ground the first turn, and then I only have to deal with one because on flash you have 90% damage reduction, so you take two hits of 10%. But 50% is enough to kill Ivan, so we need to ground it as well on the same okay. turn. Yeah, I was. Losing. So yeah, first time Fusion Dragon is unable to move, Maybe. and then he'll get another one. The menus are so efficient that it was hard to catch it sometimes. <laughs> 777 damage is not bad. Uh, so many spooky friends, dude. Uh, with that is on this turn. So I'm going to do a little bit of extra damage there just to kind of prep myself. That's actually really nice. Um, having that with not too much damage on Mia and Isaac, that should be fine. Um, there's a lot of spooky friends, though. Is there any way to get rid of the status? Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, there's a Ginny that has a, a status. Oh, there's Break. Okay. Um, that was after. Okay, I need to do one more judgment. I can't do it just yet. I was going to hopefully go for the Thorius turn next, but I don't think I can do it. Uh, judgment. Ground. Granite. Uh, okay, so after the Thorius turn. Uh, yeah, I think I can do Thorius now. Um, I guess I'll get ready on time because I think it's when when the screen fades and all that kind of stuff. So, judgment is not not boosted here, but it's fine. It'll be okay. Don't reflect. Thank you. <laughs> Dragon Diver. I know it's Driver, but I've called it Dragon Diver my entire life. That's what it, that's just what it's called now. Uh, yeah. So let's do Thorius. Let's just go for it. Uh, Flint, Flash. You're banking on this killing right now. No, no, no. The next turn. So it's three judgments. Thorius judgment. So one regular judgment, two boosted, and then this, I believe. Or it's one, two, then this, and then it goes for it. The the boss has 5,000 HP, so like this is a lot of damage in one turn. This is like two th two fifths of the fight here. We're good though. Dragon Diver. Cool. That should be the fight. Um, should be. If it's not, well, I guess I'll kill on the next turn. <laughs> Get ready on time. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's, a, I mean, considering everything that's gone wrong and me cutting out the last seven minutes of uh, mashing, I'd say it's pretty close to estimate. Yeah. There we go. Time. Gee, well done. There we go. How did we lose? <laughs> um, yeah. It was a pretty tough run. Uh, a lot of bad RNG happened. Um, a lot of bad RNG, but uh, there was also yeah. a lot of amazing recoveries. Yeah. And <laughs> I must admit, amazing commentary the whole way oh, through. I appreciate that. You have, Very kind. Uh, this is a beautiful game to watch. It's clearly been designed with a lot of love, and you have showcased it amazingly. Oh, thank you. Thank no, you. So I much. greatly uh, appreciate that. That's very kind. You, uh, it's, you, it's you, a, you talked at the start about it being the best game of all time. Well, you one know what? You've made a fairly good argument for that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a really, it genuinely is a very advanced like RPG considering the platform it came out on, a handheld for the one and also just for the Game Boy Advance. It stands head and shoulders above majority of its, not all, but majority of its contemporaries just on, on a te technical standpoint. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's been really, um, it's been nice to do it. But like, honestly, like the community for this game is really, really strong. I want to say, like, I mean, Plexer is one of my best friends I've made from speedrunning. Like a genuine, a genuine, uh, like, um, just amazing guy, really. Um, really excellent router and excellent um, runner and so kind and giving with his time for the event. But like everyone in the community is fantastic. 
um i can't name everyone but like you know kari and bluzer and uh and then happy and and zeto and um i think ollie as well and gosh i could keep going on but like there's loads and loads of people who've been doing so much excellent work at pushing this game and not this one but tla and dark dawn uh speaking of dark dawn Velissa. Uh, an excellent member of the Go of the Golden Sun community has just been a, a real, real, real pillar of that. So, uh, shout out to the rest of the community because they're brilliant. Um, Felix will jump into the water, try and save Sheba, and his his cape will go blue for game two. Um, but yeah, I'm going to call it there because I think we want to move on to Near coming up next. So uh, yeah, that was that was pretty fun. Thank you again for all of the do the donations that came through. It was nice to do some upside down stuff. You made Yisk uh, do the the crack and skip and save me 17 minutes. Yeah, you're so, right. So uh, cheers, buddy. Thanks. It would have been what 15 th uh, 4 13 if, uh, if if you hadn't. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah, legend. Huh? Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was a pleasure to do it. Um, and uh, now I've got to go raid only an hour and 37 late. Um, <laughs> um, good hurry. Yeah, yeah, oh. it's all good. Um, yeah, no, um, yeah, cheers indeed. There's probably more from the Golden Sun community. I'm sorry if I if I didn't name you, but you know, thank you very much. Um, cool. Let's go to the let, let's cut to break, and we'll see you for the next run, which is going to be near original near old man near with Skatey Four living. <laughs>